Hey, y'all. What's up? We are back for another episode of the Ooh Ladies First panel. Welcome back. Welcome back. Make sure that you guys are coming in and you're supporting the video by liking up the video and you're supporting all of us by subscribing to our channels, following us on Instagram, Twitter, all of that great stuff at Bondi Blue at Nisi Dixon. And Bondi has a new Twitter name, which is Blue Rose Bondi, right? Yes. Yes, over there on the Twitter. All right. Um, yeah. So are you ladies ready to have a good time? Yeah. Ready, ready. All right. Yes. Let's get into it. How is everybody doing today? Happy Thursday. Good. It's good. 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 Really awesome. Good. Listen, I I got a video for us to get into. I really want to get y'all thoughts on this because um you two have already had your weddings, you've already gotten married and everything. And I just wonder if y'all would agree with some of the things that this lady has to say. So let's go ahead and get into it. Let's get into weddings because you know IG lives for a hot ass wedding. So if you're getting married and you want a wedding party for your big day, are you responsible for taking care of all of the things that your wedding party needs? Or are you asking your wedding party to cover the cost? If you're getting married and you want bridesmaids and groomsmen, you pay for it. Absolutely. It's a line item. It's no different from the flowers to the cake and all this other shit. Yep. I think it's absolutely ridiculous and tacky that any grown ass person will be asking someone else put five it's on crazy. your dress. It's crazy. If you don't have the money to have bridesmaids, you should just say that. Just say it. Because at the end of the day, people have responsibilities at home. They cannot pay for your bachelor party, your your bridal shower. The I feel yeah, this way about in general wear. all shit. I think okay. birthday parties, yeah. if it's my birthday, I want a section. I'm trying to ball out and do all this extra shit. Okay. I'm not asking nobody to send me no Venmo. For, no. I'm not doing that. It's tacky. Wow. I hate it. Mm. Her jacket is tacky. Uh -uh. Her <laughs> professionalism is tacky as well. Oh, now, can I just I say, like her red nails, though. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I have to say, I disagree. So I'm looking forward to hearing you all's thoughts because I'm, I'm I'm not there yet. But I definitely, um, I just disagree. I feel like birthdays and weddings are different. More so with weddings, I definitely, I mean, both are optional. If a person comes to you and asks you to be a part of their wedding, you can decline. You know your financial situation more than anybody else. So if you can't fulfill, I'm sure that person will be okay. But what are y'all thoughts about that? I think, and, and I've been to plenty of weddings. I've been in weddings. I don't know what the f she talking about. You buy your own damn dress. Like, what are you talking about? Now, I'm going to tell you the thing. I think it's tacky. I think it's tacky when y'all don't have open bar. Like, if you oh my gosh, bar, you need to have, nobody should be paying for drinks at your wedding. You know what I'm saying? Especially if they buy gifts and all of that but no if if we doing a wedding thing you pay for your own damn dress shoes and jewelry what i paid for was the bouquets because i wanted real flowers in the bouquets so i paid for the bouquets but outside of that no you pay for your own damn dress girl what the fuck talking about if you ain't got it just say bitch you don't call my pockets come to okay. <laughs> yeah i agree um uh, i think in theory what she's saying is cute like cute for the internet you know everybody got a cute little internet response and that's what that was mm -hmm. but um when it came time for my wedding i paid for jewelry and of course i gave them a gift like you know everybody's doing the whole bridesmaid gifts now you give them the bag the all the stuff like yeah. that um but Honestly, I agree. Birthday parties and weddings and showers are different. Weddings are also one of those times where you honor the bride and bridesmaids are there to support the bride. So if it's something that you can't do as far as time or finances, then, you know, just say I'll support you another way. So yeah. I have to disagree. I had two bridesmaids mm -hmm. and two groomsmen and I had my little cousin. Well, no, I had my, my niece be like a junior bride. And I had my little cousin be like, you know, the flower girl. OK, mm -hmm. and everybody pay for their own dresses. But like, you know, it's a party that you're it's a party for you to dress up 
take pictures. You ain't got to pay for nothing besides your, your dress and, you know, your stuff, your jewelry or whatever. I left it up to them what they wanted. I didn't even want a wedding party, y'all. I could have flew to another fucking country and got married. But my whole damn family was like, no, y'all got to have a wedding. Y'all got to have a wedding. And guess how much the goddamn wedding was? The, the, wed the wedding was what? I want to say about $15,000. And yeah. that was cheap. That was cheap mm. at the time on a goddamn what? On a Saturday. That was uh -huh. cheap back then. And I had all the food done. You know what I'm saying? All of, Everything was in the same venue. The venue came with decor. The decor was beautiful. They did the food because y'all know we're in New Orleans. So any place that's doing food, the food going to be fucking good. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we had open Man, I bar. I got married in New Orleans shit. <laughs> <laughs> I still think about the food at my wedding. I, I wouldn't want to sue. I was mad as fuck. <laughs> you don't understand. It wasn't that bad. To, girl, when I sat down from the air, Bonnie, no. I'm so glad you was there. When I sat down from that uh, damn ceremony and they handed me a plate, oh, I, I looked at that. So I was so fucking mad. You don't understand. You don't. And the thing was, because it was so expensive. And I was also mad because the venue was all inclusive. So they had like an open house night. You try. So it's like you go to a, a pre-wedding. You go have an open house night. You try all the food and everything. Everything was top tier. And then mm. we get there and you gonna embarrass me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. It wasn't wow. that bad. Thing. We had a good time too. <laughs> I think I think it wasn't that bad, Bondi, because we had an open bar. People that. was at the bar all night. Everybody was drunk. And it mm -hmm. was something to eat when you were drunk. So yes. um, but, you know, I, I don't know why everybody, especially because like if we're being realistic and I hate that y'all act like this, most people, especially before this era, were getting married in their younger years when their yeah. parents or somebody else, if they wasn't helping them with the wedding, they wasn't going to have no big old extravagant wedding like that unless you was fucking with a dope boy. So miss mm. me with the bullshit. OK, if you don't have parents that are going to help you pay for a wedding and shout out to my mom for helping. Mm -hmm. with our wedding because she felt like if your daddy was here that's what he would have done which yeah. he would have you know what i'm saying but ultimately like our wedding came out of our pocket as mm -hmm. 20 something year old people who owned Same. a home like yep. you don't have to come you don't even have to be a part of it yeah I, I kept it so easy breezy and i and i had a, a wedding planner that's what my mom paid for my mom paid for my wedding planner which was my cousin and she gave us a deal but it still was some thousands of dollars yeah, so, it's mm. expensive as fuck. Weddings are like shit, upwards to thirty thousand. I would say, mm -hmm. yeah, twenty five. That's 30, probably now, especially now. I'm sure this like the basis, like that's the bare minimum, yeah. depending on what you're kind of going for as well. Because I mean, some of the all inclusive places can definitely be clutch as well. Yeah, um, low key. I looking back though. Just the the girl who was just in that clip, Sarah puts ass people like that really make me think if I could have done that's it a, that's again. A perfect word. That's a perfect word to get. <laughs> yeah, she was mad as fuck. Yes. It's something it's something about it that's not right. Yeah, energy. Um, hmm. They if I could do it again, I probably would not have a wedding. Like it, it was by the time we got to the honeymoon, I just felt so relaxed. You didn't have to worry about people, what they felt like participating in, what they didn't feel like particip participating in. Like we only stayed for what, four or five days. If we could have took all that money and stayed for two, three weeks, that would have mm. been the best thing ever. Girl, thank so, I mean, <laughs> mm. and, and we still could have had like a party. Like we could have went to the damn courthouse, had a party. And had, had a party. Bar. Yeah. Don't yeah. have to worry about no bridesmaids. Don't have to worry about who gonna pay for what. Yeah, no. Because in them big life events, like she the type of friend who will reveal themselves in a big life event. Because that's mm -hmm. something else that happens with weddings and babies yeah. and houses, all that type of stuff. The people who really are fucked up, they start to reveal themselves. And that's kind of what she giving. That's why I said Sarah Puss. Oh my. Girl, when I tell you. They really do. <laughs> That energy coming up off that screen. I was just like, oh, I, I don't like this energy. But I also feel like that's always like, you know, them old drug dealer girlfriend ass bitches that's been having a Dooney and Burke bag since they was, you know, 16 <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, Dooney and Burke. <laughs> But, you know, listen, if you got it like that, if you have it like that, then then do it. You know what then I'm saying? It, like, right. if, I, if I had a whole bunch of money, of course, I would just pay for everything just to not be worried about nothing. Right. But at the same time, I don't feel like it's tacky. Right. People don't want to pay for all of that as if all of us 
have the money to be doing all of that. Like, it's what? realistic. Yeah. <laughs> It just makes me think about, and I would have never expected this to be on the wedding side of things, but it just makes me think about how y'all are putting out yet another video, adding more pressure to these people that are young, up and coming, feeling like they need to fulfill that. Oh, I invite my friends out for my birthday. I got to pay for everything. Some friends don't mind paying for that. When it comes to the wedding, you know, now you're going to feel pressure that you got to meet this standard and this, that it just makes me think of those other videos that are floating around that's, you know, adding pressure to the folks. I hate that. Yeah. And they say shit. So matter of fact, too, it yeah. makes you feel like, dang, maybe should I? Right. Yeah. And then make you feel like you ain't SHI if you ain't right. got it. If you in if this you, economy, in this you're economy. not going to pay for everything <laughs> in this economy. And then okay. she got down in the comments, y'all. Go ahead. I was about to say I paid six ninety nine for a bag, a bag of fucking tortilla chips at Whole Foods, bitch. This Girl. is the world. <laughs> we just bought some Doritos. It was seven dollars. I was Full like, air. Doritos, full of air, full of hey, air. Let me start getting some, get some garden boxes in my <laughs> backyard. Six ninety nine. Full of air. That's what pisses me off when I spend that much and I open it and the bag just deflates. Like God, just full of air. I hate that. Yeah. It's ridiculous. But what you about to say? The wedding planner doubled down in the comments in all caps said, I said what I said. That jacket said, tells me everything I need to know. <laughs> you're a wedding planner. I'm like, this is so unprofessional, ma'am. Like, I don't think you should have said that. You know okay. why? She, she wants to market herself to the women that have that same mentality. Luxury. And those women are stupid mm -hmm. on some level because they'll spend money they don't have to spend in order to, to showcase they got it like that. Girl, sure. you might have it like that right now, but we've seen, you know, you, the up years don't always be up years. You know what I'm saying? Hello? Child, Dr. Yeah. Heaven, that when we talked yesterday, she was like, just because you're making a lot of money this year, don't mean you're going to be making a lot of money in two, three years. So, you know, live below your means. Don't be stupid about it. Because everybody think that, oh, you made, you know, especially when you're an entrepreneur, you had a good year. You can live on what you made that good year, bitch. I learned that from 2021. <laughs> mm. I learned that shit from 2021 when the bitch made way too much money that year. And then after that, it was like, bitch, what happened to my check? <laughs> like girl okay mm -mm. we not about to like be on the internet like for y'all so that we can be in debt and broke over mm -hmm. a bitch on the internet who might be living on a box spring mattress girl <laughs> i appreciate this comment they said uh, <laughs> uh jamie they put uh, air in the bag so the chips don't break why the ship it handle listen i like uh -huh. like the real reason Come on, who told you to say that? Like he worked there. That's what it is. That man is taxing Listen. chips before. It. Listen, okay, if we don't do it like that, <laughs> it's the fact that I still be having crumbs, though. That's the thing for me. Though, like, okay, I'm tired we of still be having this. broken chips. <laughs> but hey, hey, at least some of them was together. Because if it wasn't, if it wasn't no air in the bag, you'd have all just the bottom of the bag tight. <laughs> Maybe it's in there to keep them fresh or something. Cause I'm like, what the hell? That has to be it. To Look, keep them baby, fresh. A can of Pringles. I mean, that is makes sense. And we ain't even got to worry about them breaking in a Pringle can. <laughs> oh shit, that's true. Shit, cereal is high as hell. It's oh, crazy. Yeah. It um, it's crazy. I don't, I don't eat in a, for some reason. I don't eat breakfast anymore. Like I don't really eat in the morning. Me neither. I wish I do I a protein smoothie. Food. That that's all I do, girl. Just move supplements. I barely do that. Well, if I, I'm talking ooh, like I, I try have. to just move. I haven't finished the rest of them, but that motherfucking blueberry one was it protein? Yes, yes. Mm. When I tell you, I yes, swear man. we be in here. That's all. <laughs> that's all we drink and eat in this motherfucker. It's some just move supplements. It's either energy supplement because we tired, or it's the protein shake because I ain't got no appetite, but I need to eat some. Need eat some. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So that one was good, but um, that's how we got on the wedding lady. Mm -hmm. That's how we got on the wedding lady. Okay, great. So listen, guys, before we transition into our next topic, we have over seven hundred people here. So you know what we gotta ask y'all to do, right? Pull 
up on him. And, you know, we were just kind of like vibing. So then he's like, yeah, I'm about to move up out this house. <laughs> and uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. He's like, yeah, I'm about to move up out of here. I'm about to move in with my baby mama um, until I get my stuff together. And, you know, we're about to start doing love and hip hop. And I was like, wait, wait, what? <laughs> what is happening? I thought that Diamond was the baby mama. Right. Uh -huh. Because he said they were together for like five years. And so I'm looking at pictures whenever I'm trying to like it was like limited in Internet like mm -hmm. business at that point. It was like media takeout stuff like yeah. whatever. Uh -huh. So I'm like trying to Google this fool, like trying to see what's going on. But every time I see a picture of him and her, I see Imani and she's little. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, oh, that's the kid. You know what I'm saying? So then when he say, well, I'm about to move in with my baby mama. I'm like, wait, didn't she leave? And he's like, no, like I'm talking about my daughter's mom. And I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm thoroughly like confused were you guys point. intimate during this time he's telling you this i think we have probably like got a crack in like once or twice but we weren't really like in y'all weren't exclusive no nah, right, we right. wasn't nothing like that <clears throat> okay so i'm like all right you know it is what it is so then they started filming love and hip-hop and um he would call me like during or after like the film is I remember one time he season one. Yes, he called me one time. He was like, "Hey, I just got in a fight with this nigga named Stevie J," and I'm like, "He's like, yeah, my baby mama got. He has some chick like her name is Jocelyn." I'm like, "Who is this?" Like, I'm all into the story. I'm <laughs> like, "Damn, what happened?" <laughs> so he just like ran it right. <laughs> you like me? What happened? I'm like, what happened? Who won? And he was like, "Yeah, <laughs> she was kind of big, like you know she." <laughs> I'm like, okay, whatever. But he he really ran it on what happened with Erica and Jocelyn. I ain't gonna repeat it, but <laughs> what did know. he say? Yeah. <laughs> but um I'm not even gonna repeat that. But Did he, he make it seem like Erica lost? I don't know. <laughs> um so anyways, so that that was that the type is of hilarious. That was the type of relationship we had, right? So, so he so it's funny because I work season one. I know. So yeah. he's filming with Erica. Mm -hmm. Um, that's his child's mother right. and they're trying to figure things out and they were living together. Yeah. But meanwhile, after scenes, he's calling you. We were like hanging out after scenes. Yeah, that's out. how that's how like confused I was about it because he was telling me he was like, no, nah, we just get a bag. Like, you know, what I'm saying whatever. I'm just trying to help her get some money so she can stay out of my pockets, you know, whatever. And I'm like, whatever. Like, I'm just like a butterfly like I'm new to the city and I'm just like hanging out doing yeah, my thing you're whatever. a single woman you guys Absolutely. aren't in an exclusive relationship yeah. and okay so, I, I get I get all this right so that was the nature of our relationship Got at that point right it. okay so during that time um, I think maybe towards the end of the season he me and him started getting like a little closer right he started really really liking me and i liked him too like i did like him a lot because he, he was just really fun mm -hmm. um so he introduced me to like steph and mona one time we were hanging out on peter peter street mm -hmm. that's and, where the office was yeah, yeah so he's like you know um i want to do some stuff with her blah 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 whatever whatever so then I started to notice like a pattern with him and Erica, or whatever. And I was like, wait, are you like with her for real? And he was like, he kept denying the fact that he was with her. And I was just like, this look like it's like a little bit more than for TV. So at that point, um, I think I had met like Kirk and Benzino on Peter Street. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like cool with them and talking to them or whatever. So when you so, went to the cabin, you obviously was like, it's being filmed. Yeah. And I'm here for the vibes. Absolutely. And, you know, I had been on TV already. Right. So it wasn't really a big thing for me. It was just like, I already know what time it is. Like, we're here to film a scene. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're going to make it do what it do. And Benzino and I, we were cool. And we were, I guess, what people would consider dating at the time. Like, we were going out. 
but we just wasn't having sex, you know? So you were dating Bazzino and Scrappy at the same time. Yeah. And I oh, think that's okay. what was, like, intriguing to, like, the producers at the time. They were yes. like, oh, now we got a girl who's like... <laughs> What's up? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's what I was doing. I was like, I'm going to date both of them. Who cares? They don't know each other. They're not <laughs> friends. All right. That was some of the interview that Mr. Bam gave over there to, um, you know, Carlos. So I thought that the interview was really good for the most part. Um, after listening to the entire interview, my conclusion of it all, I do believe that he definitely played. He was lying. He kind of reeled her in a bit because he was over there lying about the different relationships. But I do believe that once she found out, it didn't deter her from stopping from messing with him. Mm -hmm. And when she said that he was all of their boyfriends, I said, B.I.T., you is not lying because mm -hmm. that's exactly mm -hmm. what the fuck he was. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, she may have not known about Shay. I'm not sure because Shay was also in the picture. But I really feel like everybody was side oh, gosh. to Number everybody. Four. Shay was in yeah, the Yeah, number four. Yeah. I see everybody play side chick roles he at different always, times. He always kind of had them in somewhat of a rotation. Mm -hmm. First of all, he was with Erica in like high school or whatever. So like, I think when she got pregnant with E-Money, he left her, went to Diamond. Diamond mm -hmm. left him. Then he ended up going back to Erica, but then mm -hmm. also talking to Bam and also talking to Shay all at the same time. The only difference I feel is Bam mm -hmm. did not put all her eggs in Scrappy's basket at that time. She was just like, yeah. Yeah, I, I, have, mm -hmm. I have fun with him. We have a good time, but that's not my, you know, that's not my, my nigga like that. We just having a good time. I never did until they got right before they got married. I think so too. I think, well, I think that whole carefree right mentality. Right. Before, Erica, what? Remember when they got together and Bam had a miscarriage and he told Erica Pinkett about it and Bam punched that bitch in the club? I remember mm. that. I don't remember that. Oh, I feel like, like he met he, I feel like he met Bam and Shay around the same time. Probably did. Or right after Diamond. Because so, Mama D was crazy about some Shay, so Shay had to be around for a minute. <laughs> she said Amanda Seals was in rotation too. That's what I'm saying. Like, wait, 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 wait. We is got that about that. Yeah, no, that's not around. a joke. That was serious. Yeah, they was fucking around back then too. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what Bam said in the interview. Amanda, who? That's the Amanda one from Insecure. Yeah, because yeah. she mm. was. You know, Amanda that's used true. to be a DJ and she used to work like heavy in in the, the hip hop. You know, she was writing and doing um hosting and all of that for like MTV and stuff like that. So she was around the rappers a lot. And so she messed with him at some point until, you know, Mama D fucked it up. <laughs> Mama D said some shit about y'all make some pretty babies. And Amanda was like, I got to go. <laughs> oh, wow. But I didn't know that messing, part. He was messing with all of them at the same time, which is why I think it's so weird that everybody looks at Bam like she lied. She was a side chick. And I'm like, she was not a fucking side chick. He was fucking with all of them. Like, he was, and everybody's in their 20s. Like, I don't get it. Like, everybody's in their 20s and young. Like, everybody's just doing their thing. But because he had a baby with Erica, everybody feels like, and because we saw them on the show, I think everybody thinks that he belonged to her. But, yeah, none of the women look good in this scenario, but Scrappy is the epitome of scum in this. I don't see what the big deal is. Are y'all really going to act like in y'all 20s, y'all didn't find out y'all was sharing dick? <laughs> like, y'all really going to act like that never happened to y'all? Okay. <laughs> Um, <laughs> all right <laughs> yeah i agree with the one of the comments they sound like everybody just knew what it was that's why i said everybody was side chase to everybody and let's be let's be real let's be fucking for real scrappy in his 20s not now mm -hmm. in his 20s mm -hmm. charismatic a rapper successful good looking Got a little, had a little paper back then, probably was able to take the girls out and all of that. The only one that really knew he ain't had no money was probably Erica. Cause when it comes time for that child support, he's trying to get you on the show. So he ain't got to pay you child support. And I also think he was fucking with her so that he wouldn't have to pay child support. That's mm -hmm. another thing. Oh, um, yes. To me, at the end of the day, now that we're all grown <laughs> and we're looking at the situation. <laughs> Oh, the passion behind that. Yes, Jamie. Listen. <laughs> you already know what it is. He like, I'm going to go give her some dick and she ain't going to ask me for no money. 
that's the, I'm, I promise you that's how he felt about that situation. But I just think it's weird for everybody to be trying to make Bam, who he eventually married, a side chick in all of this. Instead yeah, they're of, just doing that because she came on last. But that, you know, essentially all of the women had their turn as first mm -hmm. and all of them were aware of some sort of red flags. And they just kept going with it. He wasn't married to none of them. And I think all, I think all of them just had this level of, I don't give a fuck. I'm living my life. I'm going to do this. He going to be in and out. And you know, this is how I want mm -hmm. it. He's and doing the same, the same thing happened this season with Diamond and Erica. They both knew that they was fucking him. But if Erica... Ooh try to save face and say i'm not fucking him girl you fucking him that's why that's he was that's why he was mad at diamond for posting a picture diamond already said they was fucking he'd already posted well she had posted they remember they was on live and he was cooking breakfast so we already knew that they were smashing so why would he get mad at diamond for posting him in her bed the only reason he got mad is because that shit made erica mad erica probably had rules like you know this is say whatever she won't say but she better not do this she better not do that Erica probably got mad when she saw that picture because he was only supposed to be really posting him and Erica on social media as a way of giving Erica her little pedestal right. lift needed to keep fucking with him. But yeah, no, they they still down there swapping fluids with each, uh, with each, each oval. Mm. That's insane. Except for Bam now. Bam's the only one that's no longer in the rotation. That's insane. That's too long. 20 years. Why. Bambi did say that. Didn't Bambi say that? Uh, Erica literally hated Daryl at that time. Go back and watch season one. He was behind in child support and said that's About why he child support. Erica. Yeah. Yeah. They, they often had that issue with one another, like where he didn't want to pay child support. And she was like, you not helping and you not here. That's why I, that's, I'm going to tell you, that's really why I can't stand Erica because I feel like you watch that man not help you. And you really still saw Bam during the divorce as a problem when you know good and goddamn well that that man not helping her. And she got three babies under the age of five. And y'all come up with a lie about her not feeding teenage E-Money. Like, mm -mm. With, with three small babies on her titty. And you like, she mistreated my child because she ain't feed my child. And it's like, girl, when the girl had the two small babies and your daughter like 15, like. Yeah, I don't see how the women can really hate each other. I don't eat. Yeah, that's what I'm this on. Be friends. It's him though. It's him creating the triangulation. And the reason why he does that is because of Mama D. Mama D is always causing discourse in every single one of his relationships. Whenever he's with a specific woman, Mama D is trying to ruin that relationship. When they break up, then Mama D is in a woman's ear trying to like convince them to still kind of be in, in this kind of unit. Like, remember when she got on, on a breakfast club and said that diamond coochie stink? And then you're going to turn around and be all in this girl face now? Like, that shit's so weird. The way her... like. She caught when she told uh oh, wow. when she told Erica's mama to go smoke a straight shooter. That was I why they remember that. It. that was why the engagement ended because Mama D was being disrespectful and he would never get his mama under control. Ever he like, tried with the bam. Now when she made that obituary of that girl mama and I yes. remember this like that's just Hold too on. What did she do? Yeah, yes. it was like she season five. Something yeah. like that. Yes, no. this woman what made an obituary of this was, girl's mama is so out of line. And her mom had what? cancer. And I think oh. it was right after she had her first baby with him. So what did they do? That's, didn't did Scrap try to say something to her? I think he, or did he keep her from coming around to see the grandkids or something? Yeah, I think he like stepped he, in. Like he did that to a for a little while. No, she did that to, to baby. baby. Fuck no. Nah, uh-uh. Ain't no yeah, way. She did baby. Ain't no way. Baby. Better than mm. that, that's the only that's the only thing. Bambi mm. definitely overstayed her mm. welcome. Period. She overstayed her welcome. And to hear that she was actually fucking with a dude that didn't have no kids, was doing good for himself, and she chose Scrappy because her mama was in her ear. I needed to hear more about how she sits in that L often. I know she don't regret her kids, they are gorgeous. But I just, I wanted to hear more about how she sits in the L. The good thing is that it seemed like they might still be in communication or whatever. Yeah, but I was like, help. damn. 
I'm going to tell you, I think that that's kind of like normal, honestly. Like when you think about it, I feel mm-hmm. like when I was growing up, me specifically, because I saw a lot of toxicity in, in relationships around me. If people ain't fighting and fucking, it's boring. It's not, you know, it's not sparking the emotion and all of that. Like you, you feel like this is boring and maybe this is not it. And mm-hmm. if I ain't gonna lie, like when she said the way he was going around, where the band, where the band, I remember that shit. And I feel mm-hmm. like at the end of the day, like that probably would get most women. Like if a man was putting that much public pressure, mm-hmm. texting your mama, calling your mama, I love her, I miss her, I'm looking for her, I'm trying to find her. And then when he find you, he proposed to you in front of everybody and they got married a month later. Like it was definitely given like a love bomb situation. But she said, you know, she made, she ignored all the red flags. But I feel like that's normal for us to do that when we young because we don't exactly know what we're looking at. Like, Mm -hmm. especially if you watch toxicity, you know, in your parents' relationship, you think that shit normal. I Hmm. mean, they show that in the media too, though. Baby boy, the fuck out of us every damn Sunday on the BET (laughs) shit. Yeah, it's on Disney Plus now. (laughs) It's just very true. (laughs) (laughs) Hold up, hold on, what? Disney baby, baby boy. boy. Disney yeah, baby Plus? boy is on Disney Plus. Girl, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Disney wildin. Disney said they finna yeah. get a coin by any means. Any means. Throw all this shit on here. Throw it all Girl. on here. Thanks. We'll take it. Wow. Mm-hmm. Somebody says I, I truly don't understand all the hate for Bam. Folks act like she's a liar, but Erica's words are Bible. I don't get it. I don't know if it's that. I just think that Erica mentioned that Bambi was messing with Scrappy around the time she was messing with him, right? So now that Bambi is confirming it, I think that's why people are (laughs) like, oh, you was a side chick, you was a side chick. But also I think Erica, I don't know if she ever took into account what he was actually telling Bam. She never, You know what I'm saying? Like he, what was he telling her though? It's like she don't care. Like peep the situation with Diamond. The way she acted with Diamond, Diamond is having a conversation with Mama D about whatever happened with Scrappy. She inserts Mm -hmm. herself into the situation and acts like it has something to do with E-Money. I'm Mm -hmm. telling you, like to me, Erica seems like the one that wants to have this position in his life no matter what. And I think Mm -hmm. it's because we go back all the way to childhood. And I bottom bitch mindset. Yes, bottom bitch mindset. If he need Mm -hmm. me, I'm gonna be there. And I'm always yep. The way Bam talked about him, yeah, I think he's trauma bonded with all of them. And I think that he might have specifically trauma bonded with Erica because they go back so far. And when the, when women know the type of trauma and pain that a man has gone through in the, in their childhood, I think they make a lot of allowances for them throughout their adulthood to continue to wreak havoc simply because you know the pain they've been through. It's, right. You know, it's sad, and I feel like Scrappy need fucking therapy. But Mama D don't make it no better. That fucking video that Mama D put out in front of colleges, oh. David. <laughs> I, I said I, I, I ain't even know. click on it. She literally, cause y'all, this is not for some, cause somebody in the comments earlier said that Bam didn't answer the question about her age. Let's be clear. Bam is 40. Bam is 40. She graduated from college in 2005. Mm, No, then she'd be 37, right? I thought that would make her 40. No, she would be probably older than me because I graduated after her. Yeah, I graduated. graduated So she, she would, she would be about 40, 41. Yeah, she would be 40, 41. Uh, my sister graduated in 2003, and she's 39. She's about well, to be well, 39. How old was when she graduated? Because I was 21. So I assume most people are 21 when they graduate. Oh, right. you said college. Yeah. College, yeah. I figured you was thinking I thought school. you were saying high school. Oh, yeah. yeah. College. <laughs> college. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. Now, I believe on the internet, it said that band was 39. Okay, or something like that. But either way, 39, 40, 41. Bitch, what is the big damn difference? How old is Scrappy? <laughs> Ain't that the same He's age? Nine. He, I think she might, Scrappy might be a year younger than her. And so they keep trying to act like she's so much older than him and she lied about her age or something. Um, Bam went to school with my cousin and she 43. She was, well, how did she graduate from college in 2005 if she's 43 now? That doesn't make any sense. 
Uh, um, she took breaks. Go to school school. Or summer that, school. That's only a year yeah. longer. That's only a year longer if she graduated in 05. Because <clears throat> if it graduated if it college in 05. Breaks. Okay. I've been with my cousin oh. and she's 43 did the same age. Okay. 43. So 43. That that's a big difference between 40 and 43. I'm just saying. Mm-mm. Wait, somebody said I'm 43. I graduated college or three. See, that's what I, I'm going. She might have been in college for longer though. Because some people do take more than four years. And I do remember her saying she switched schools. I switched schools a lot too. And I still graduated at, at 21. But that's just me. But I just assumed, okay. Either way, she did still graduate from college. And Mama D is just trying Rip to act that like, girl. Oh, Bro, when she ripped the when she ripped that diploma, I ain't gonna lie. I wanted to hit her too. And I, I finish it. I feel like Mama D. I saw a clip. Bondi, you are not bright. Uh, well, maybe. Girl, <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm not bright. I don't know. I think I'm doing really well in life to say I'm not too bright. Uh, you watching mm-hmm. me? I'm not watching you. So there's that. <laughs> okay. Um, but essentially, either way, she still graduated from college. Like, there's a whole picture with the with you know the Dominguez mm-hmm. thing at the bottom and everything. I don't know why we're even arguing about this. Mama D just wants to. De- they all want to knock Bam down some notches because Bam, I believe, had more self respect for herself than the other women involved. Bambi don't got no uh, restraining order. It she sounds like one. she has. You said what? She need one. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like she has more than enough evidence to be granted a restraining order against Mama D. Like you wouldn't even be able to speak by that. Do you? She sounds like she should be able a to gag speak. order. That's harassment. She should be able to sue her. That's what I would have she yeah. would be afraid to say my name on mine. It's like every other week, it is a new video, and it's it is getting a little, it's getting it's exhausting. Weird. Like weird. you just did a music video, now you're over here doing a college video. It's like just leave the lady alone, and it's crazy. <laughs> just leave her alone. The way she like low key like that insinuation of shooting Bambi in that vid in that music right. video, like come on, bro, like that that's a lot. And I feel like it's crazy because if Scrappy really was to like be like, Ma, if you don't fucking stop, like I'm not going to talk to you ever again. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate that. Y'all know I don't care about these people, <laughs> but I do like to get with them because, you know, that's what we're here for. You know what I'm saying? Y'all y'all know y'all like when I go off on people. I give it to y'all. Y'all like, bro, yeah. Do y'all think right. she, she could have been lying? Mm-hmm. Somebody said she, she could have been lying to Carlos in the interview. Lying about what? That's what I was wondering. Like, what what part would have been a lie? And what's to lie about? I didn't really think she... I thought she was being honest. Because the reason why I felt like she was being honest was because I'm like, you telling us some stuff that's going to make people drag you. Yes. Honestly. Because once they hear that you knew he was messing with Diamond, but they still live together, even though she left him to go mess with somebody else. And then you admit that you still smashed him at least once or twice. By the time he moved back in with Erica, I feel like some of the stuff she said was getting her dragged, but mm-hmm. she didn't mind saying it. So, I mean, I don't know. I just, I was like, okay, I appreciate the honesty because we kind of already heard some stuff that she had been messing with Scrap. All she did was come through and kind of like confirm that. But if that's the part that you're speaking on, I feel like she was being honest. Yeah, I did too. I honestly, I feel like it was the most transparent she had been in any of the interviews that she's done. Because mm-hmm. it was like, this time, it's like, I'm okay with being a villain. Y'all not going to like me anyway. So it don't matter what the fuck I say. I'm going to just tell y'all the truth. And y'all can take it. Y'all can believe it. Y'all cannot. Because at the end of the video, she was like, I, I know I'm going to be a villain. I'm And people just not going to like me. They don't like my teeth. She did say like that. Mom, so it don't even fucking matter. It is what it right. is. I enjoyed her energy. And I love the fact that she was getting everybody together. Because to me, I really did feel like they were online talking to her and she was never responding diamond was on lives talking about her and it was so weird because bambi had never said anything about her erica mm-hmm. was online mama d was on everybody at some point got their ass on instagram live to talk about this lady and i don't ever remember her doing that <laughs> she did interviews but she's also selling books and, and selling shit so yeah. it's like why would i not capitalize off this mess and make my money like right and, and you know i book. when i saw the clip at first I was like, ooh, Bambi, girl, no, ma'am, this is not, you should have kept this. And I said, I'm going to watch the full thing. And I had people like, nah, Jamie, like, watch the full interview. And I'm glad that I did because I got, like, a different 
yes. view of you know everything once I saw the whole thing. So I mean, but that's just me. The other way around. I did it the other way around. I didn't see any clips. I I think I might have saw like Carlos' first clip, but it wasn't nothing she said that was that salacious on Carlos' thing because it hadn't mm -hmm. gone viral on the blog yet. So I was just like, Bam, why are you making me go watch this interview just because you're doing it? So I went to go watch the interview just because, you know, I wanted to see what she was going to say. But yeah, mm -hmm. no, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I thought it was good. All right, y'all. So that's it on the Bam and things. All right. Another controversial topic. Ooh. Let's get into um, Koi Ray. Real quick, um, Corey LeRae uh, has some things to say on her IG live when somebody approached her, mm -hmm. and a lot of the fans didn't really appreciate her response. So I'm gonna let y'all hear what she had to say. Try to bag me on an Instagram live is fucking crazy, <laughs> like dead ass. Get the fuck on, okay? Go on the fuck head, okay? I'm not interested. Like that's fucking corny. The fuck. What are we doing here? I'm going. I'm getting the fuck off. Go, go look at my post. I'm about to post my cover. Bye, y'all. So she's talking about Adrian Bronner, who happens to be a boxer. All right. Now, once she did this video, people started dragging her for her looks and felt like she was being rude and nasty to this man. All because they saw one comment that said, meet me in Miami, yada, yada, yada. But what they didn't see was the first comment he said was, I'm on your body. So because people started dragging her, she came back and said that she wasn't trying to be harsh or nothing like that. And then now he's trying to flip it, make it seem like he was doing marketing. And now the whole world knows that his fight is in Miami. And I was like, clown behavior, because that's not what it was. You got rejected. He was shooting and I thought she was so on mm -hmm. her live and got rejected. And that's yep. her response. Okay. Yeah. Um, Was that a filter on her face? Yes. Okay. Because she looked completely different i was like who is that no. so um you know i'm not really mad at what she said whenever the name adrian bronner comes to mind it's associated with a lot of foolishness like i can't even remember what it is but the file cabinet in my brain is telling me it's a lot of <laughs> foolishness so i'm not feeling no type of ways that she's like don't shoot your shot at me on mine it's lame yeah, I equated similar to the fact that he was leaving a, a number of comments. I equated it to a woman walking down the street and a dude being like, hey, shouting, hey, yes. hey, excuse me, hey, like trying to hawk you down. And then when you be like, oh, no, I'm not interested, either you're going to get harmed physically or they're going to turn around and attack you and be like, oh, you ain't even attractive anyway. You ugly anyway. Da, 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 da. And that's uh -huh. some of the stuff that I saw a lot of women doing to Koi on online talking about her teeth and stuff oh she don't when they got her teeth done she got these fat balloon lips now and this and that and i'm like all right did she get her no they were trying to say she had veneers and i'm like i thought she just had braces so did she get the braces off and go get veneers or something so they started dragging her looks all because she rejected this man that came on her live with the foolishness i disagree i definitely was on coy side with it um i'm tired of you bitches I hate to say it like that, but when I tell you the comments are always full of women coming to defend some dick they will never meet, never mm -hmm. know in real life. And it's as if every broke down nigga on social media is their little brother or, you know what I'm saying? Their, their, their dad or their son. And I'm just kind of over it because, you know, like, why are you this upset? that this woman rejected this man like niggas get rejected every day b that's what you build confidence and get money for women are supposed to be like ah -ah. you know what i'm saying we're supposed to play hard to get sometimes if that's what we're doing and we're supposed to tell you get the fuck off our instagram live if you're making us feel uncomfortable because to be honest you don't always have to ignore people if they're making you uncomfortable in your life it's your life it's your social media and so I'm I'm just tired of the women that feel like it's their job to berate another woman behind a man they don't even fucking know. Like I'm I'm tired. Mm. And there's that. Okay. What else do we have next? Speaking of women, I ain't gonna say she was berating, but let me make sure I got this clip. All right. Is that all we got on Miss Coy? Mm -hmm. I think that's she all we got on. Doing. 
Okay, cool. So next up, I want to talk about Miss Fallon's interview that she did when it comes to uh, Miss Portia. Yes, it was Girl, so unbelievable. I'm already cackling. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> Were you shocked to find out when Portia and Simon separated? No. Was anybody? Do you think that was real? No. The whole relationship you don't think was real? You don't think it was real at all? No, I think it was just a ploy to get back at me. So let me ask you this. If you, if you ever ran into Portia, what would you talk to her about that wouldn't be a safe scenario oh oh Why? it's smoke for her or it's smoke that i mean right. at the end of the day she knows what she did it it could play out in the media however everybody wants to try to play it out i know what she did simon knows what she did portia knows what she did that wouldn't be a safe scenario so i wouldn't even put myself in a predicament of even allowing that you know i'm a grown woman now oh to talk to her talk to her Ain't gonna be no talking. Were you shocked to find out when Portia and Simon separated? No. Was anybody? Do you think that was real? No. The whole relationship you don't think was real? You don't think it was real at all? No, I think it was just a ploy to get back at me. So let me ask you this. If you if you ever ran into Portia, what would you talk to her about? That wouldn't be a safe scenario. Oh. oh. Why? It's smoke. For her or it's smoke. That I mean, at the end of the day, she knows what she did. It, it could play out in the media. However, everybody wants to try to play it out. I know what she did. Simon knows what she did. Portia knows what she did. That wouldn't be a safe scenario. So I wouldn't even put myself in a predicament of even allowing that. You know, I'm a grown woman now. Oh, to talk to her. Talk to her. Ain't going to be no talking. <laughs> talk to her. Ain't even going to be no talking. But, but Ooh, peep how Alan. many times she paused, though. She was trying to be real strategic with them words because she know Portia will put them paws on you, okay? <laughs> Portia will meet you in the alleyway. She will meet you at a reunion. She was trying to be strategic with her words, but I feel like that was low-key egging her own to where she had to feel like she had to sound like she was hard. So when she said, what did she say? She said something like, that wouldn't even be no, we watched it twice. Something like that wouldn't even be no safe predicament. And they said, what do you mean to talk to her? She sat there. She 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 rocked back three times because she like, damn, what am I going to say? And then he said to talk to her. She was like, shit, talk to her. Ain't even gonna, the word, <laughs> it, it wasn't believable. The, I wasn't, there was no conviction in the words and the pause to me, just, you don't want the smoke, Fallon. And, 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 what did Portia do to her? Honestly, because whenever they first got a divorce, she made it sound like, like, yes, I, I get it. A girl came over to your home, dabbed your man up, whatever. But when they first got a divorce or when they first separated, she made it seem like Simon was the one who was wrong. They had been separated. He was fucking around with your assistant. So it's given very well, much. The check is running low. So let me say something to get back in the media. So, you know, to, to get the money up. It, it's given the check is running low. You didn't have a whole baby since then. I've been True. Two pregnancy since then. That's wild. The second clip that was supposed to play that didn't um, was her pretty much saying that Dennis came to her, had a conversation with her, I guess, when he wanted to work with her to be the brand ambassador with his company. And he told her that Portia and Simon had been messing around for a year prior. And he came to her and said, I thought you knew about it because the whole damn city knew about it. And she was like, nah, because I was never allowed out the house. She says, now to come to think about it, I know why. And he said, well, I'm sorry, but like, yeah, Portia told me that you knew and you was okay with it. And that's why she said that. I don't know, girl. Thank you for hey. the super chat, Keisha. Question. <laughs> People keep saying Portia got hands. Have we seen her fight? I've only seen the before and after. They said Portia had been sleeping with him. Thank you so much for the super chat, Keisha. I don't know if she got them hands. Y'all don't think Portia fight. got them hands? Not really. Because <laughs> when I really think about it, we didn't see what happened. We just know she liked to fight. That don't mean you can fight because you want to fight. Like to um, fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, like, and we've only seen her with Cynthia, and Cynthia kicked her in the pussy. Right. <laughs> I uh, think Portia just really didn't want to fight Cynthia. But one thing I feel like whenever Portia gets into these situations, is more so like she's very quiet. And to me, I feel like the quiet ones are the ones where you like, okay. Yeah, she no, was pretty I mean, quiet with Kenya, quiet running down the alley. 
don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, my, I, I'm not gonna ask that woman that. It. If it's Fallon or Portia, uh, okay. And let me say we don't condone fighting. We don't condone violence. Depends, but in, in some Fallon had. <laughs> I'm gonna say said, that. Let me say okay. this. Let me make I sure I say this. Y'all. If Fallon had the somebody fight, said, ask the Jamie, and I want y'all to know, I'm not the Jamie. Okay, I'm not the Jamie that was in right. the alleyway. If I promise Ooh. it would have turned out different, but no. it's not me. <laughs> it was not me, baby. I know you're probably not talking about me when you I'm say ask Jamie, but she's talking about you know somebody that wouldn't be back. Um, um, we better Jamie don't be wanting to tell us specifically what went down, okay? Uh, but I'll just say, you know, what I'm saying at the end of the day, I don't know which one will win. It just depends on the type of childhood Fallon had. Because if Fallon was like a kid that grew up poor, she might know how to fight more so than Portia. Um, again, because you know, Portia, you were what fighting a model, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on, um, you know what I mean? But I will say this about Fallon. I feel like you played yourself in that interview because we know that she was fucking on your husband when you was at the house. We know. But why are you mad at Portia, but you're not mad at the nigga that made sure you was at the house so that you wouldn't know he was cheating with Portia? Why are you not mad at Simon still? Because to me, I feel like if there's anybody you should be more upset with, it's him. Because he was the yeah. one that cheated on you. He was the one that lied. And he was the one that played you out after it was all over and made it seem like you was starting and bopping around with Jalen as if he didn't orchestrate that shit too. So I, I just kind of mm. feel like Fallon played herself and she looks stupid to me. Like at the end of the day, girl, what? You want to fight Portia now? All this time later, you still mad? You ain't moved on? You been knew that lady was fucking your husband. But <laughs> like, girl, come on. I ain't gonna lie, I be getting confusion when I when I listen. Well, I ain't gonna say when I listen, but I've recapped and listened to quite a few of Fallon's interviews, and I just be getting confused sometimes. Some stuff don't be aligning be, yeah. all the time. I'm not even trying to, you know, I'm just being no, real you. honest. Like it just don't be adding. No, I be like, so which one is it though? Like Probably did he keep you under control or did he not? Did he encourage you to do the show or he didn't? Did he not want you on the show, but he wanted you? It's just different stuff that I'm I'm in confusion about. This is a situation to me of now I know they was married, but Simon don't Simon ain't for nobody, honestly. This is a situation of if I was able to take your man, he was never your man. I hate to Ooh, say it. Shoot. Um and I think she knew that. So I'm just like, mm, I usually don't go by that. But Simon was nobody's man. Kind of like Scrappy. If if somebody was able to take your man, he wasn't your man. He wasn't. Mm. It didn't matter if he was married because he's been married umpteen times. He has no respect for uh, the institution of marriage. <laughs> so or whatever the Portia did. the institution of the United States. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, really, honestly. <laughs> no, it is. You know how much, like, how crazy you got to be? To like try to fraud the government, like to get kicked out and then create a whole new identity and come right back over this bitch. <laughs> like, I'm still over here, nigga. Like, I, y'all gonna have to send me back again and then be over here. Like, I'm gonna keep filing shit and keep filing shit so you can't send my ass back. Like, it, it listen, at the end of the day, I feel like Portia and Simon, I kept feeling like they were both scammers. On some mm-hmm. level, like first of all, Porsche's delusional, you know what I'm saying? So I really want I wanted to know what was going on in that house because they would get on social media and fake in front like everything's perfect, but there's no way that that's fucking true based on what we know as grown ass women and what we know now. So I'm just kind of like, I really wanted to know what was going on. I know that it was a lot of drinking going on, I- I've heard that. Um, oh, and somebody said, you know, Portia not running down no alleyway if she can't fight. That's not true at all. Bitches who recognize who really can't fight and who do who don't want to fight. Listen, the way Jamie speaks mm-hmm. makes me feel like she may not have had to fight a lot growing up, which mm-hmm. means if you can recognize that somebody ain't really about that life, you can ah, 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 and do all this extra shit. You know what I'm saying? To kind of yeah. you know, seem bigger and badder than you really are. If you know the person mm-hmm. you want, ain't really about all that. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's not good enough, a good enough excuse. I need to see them hands in person. In, in person, yeah. 
<laughs> I don't think Jamie's like that either. I don't. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned her voice. I'm like, she she don't really seem like that type of person that just want to fight or do nothing. Like, avoids that type of energy. Mm -hmm. Um, thank you, uh, Nicole, for the super chat. There are time stamped photos of Portia in the same place as Simon, like a year prior. I hope she starts dating Dennis. And has a baby with him. Thank you for the super <laughs> chat. She said Dennis cannot. That's, this is what that's trifling said. as fuck. <laughs> that's trifling as fuck. We don't yeah. know where it is. That's, oh, that's on some damn black DJ, China. And they baby could be like, oh, let me not. Let me and not. Barry, yeah. That that's some uh that's some black China type. <laughs> yeah, it'll be like some black China stuff. Go ahead mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. Smash your brother since you then. dated my man. Y'all see that comment? Y'all become uh, become aunties. Which comment? Nigga said Dennis is messing with Drew. Where you got that from? Girl, don't make me because fall she out was. This. You Do remember there was a clip of Dennis and Drew together? No, y'all didn't see. It was a couple weeks ago. Drew was in the studio with Dennis, I think. No, and I then didn't. one of the things that I thought was weird was like literally after everybody was commenting on Drew's post, like, why are you with, with Dennis? She go post a picture talking about go naked hair. So then I was like, hmm, is something going on? So then I went to see if they were still following each other and Drew and Portia still following each other. I can't take it. Please don't. Girl. If that's what we yeah. in for, I'm not going to be able to handle it. But why would Dennis? I just was confused why Dennis was in the studio with Drew. I didn't know he was into the music stuff. <laughs> Maybe he's friends with the producer, and he just happened to be in there when she was working. But why was she, why would it? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to say that's tear like that's crazy. Bit somebody asked you about Dennis, and you told me some damn go naked hair. If that she made a Porsche, post, she, she made a dedicated post. See, this is the way I feel like it was. Somebody, everybody was blowing her up like this looks weird, and then the next post was go naked hair, and I felt like the post was to like make it seem like you know nothing's going on. Me, that's my girl, Portia. Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. I gotta try to find mm -hmm. it. It definitely was a couple weeks ago, and nobody was talking about it. So I was like, maybe I'm tripping. That's what I'm wondering. And the hot dogs is good too, girl. I had went over the, um, but oh, that's are. crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's I hope that ain't true, y'all. I'm not gonna be able to handle that one. That's that's a lot. That's a lot going on right there. Hopefully, Drew is gonna be invited back. That's messy. All right, y'all. Anything else on Miss Fallon portion, portion the Porsche saga? We good on I that. I still take Portia in a fight, but it's cool. <clears throat> Against Fallon, I do. Oh, yeah. I can see that. I can see that. All right. All right, y'all. It's time for a little bit of TV talk as we get into Summer House, Martha's Vineyard. Okay. So, first off, y'all, Noelle had egg on her face trying to push up on Alex. She got her feelings hurt, but it kind of reminded her of her dad. Like she felt rejected, like it took her back to her dad. And I don't know why I felt like she was trying to make it Alex's fault. And I'm like, that's not really his fault that you were rejected by your dad. Um, she gets on the phone with her mom. She's very emotional about it. Some part of me in the beginning, y'all, but be real honest, and this is really mean. When I saw her over there crying and she like stomping her feet, like, and she crying, and I said, yes, that's what you get. Feel it. Talking on Feel the phone you mom? will never, uh, before she called her mom, when she was oh. on the side of the bed and she was just crying, I was like, that's what you get. Feel it. So that you will never do this again. Like, I think she's beautiful. You got a lot going for yourself. And Alex, of all people, like, feel that. Because you talking about you ain't that type of girl to run up and do this and do that. You really put yourself out there. I'm like, if you're not that type of girl, why you feel so comfortable this time doing it? I feel like you On might TV. be that type of girl. Exactly. I think she is. I think that's why I was so triggering to her. Absolutely. And I hope that she never puts herself in that position again. And I feel like she still be kind of, like, heavily checking for him and stuff. And what he got going on. He didn't invite me to church. He didn't hit me up. He didn't ask me. I could have sworn he said, did y'all want to go to church? Don't know. I don't know about that. What are y'all thoughts about Miss Noel being an addition to the show, though? I she like is. her. 
She cute. I like her. I just think she played herself. And I, I wish people would stop giving Alex so much uh attention. Yeah. Cause please stop. Cause like I, I just yeah, I, I mean it's just a rule for me that if a man thinks that he's all that, I'm not gonna show you that you're all that. You're a man. I don't, I, don't to, I don't need to do all of that. You know, mm -hmm. like, there are a lot of men out here that will tell you they're the catch. And I think that you know those men should stay where they are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> stay away from me. <laughs> they one of them, uh, I'm him ass men. <laughs> I can't do it. I'm him. I'm right. a bad bitch. Um, Listen. Yeah, I wasn't checking for him in the first season when he said that, I said this last week, when he said that he was vegan, did yoga, and wrote music. I felt like those were all three huge red flags in combination because it was given, like, I'm trying to... What what they say re, re, relief myself of the fuck boyness. Mm -hmm. They let me know that something was very much still there. Kind of like mm -hmm. the fuck boys that be in the church all the time. That's mm -hmm. what he was giving. Yeah. All, all the spirituality is yes. yeah. You Absolutely. gotta. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. feel like they they kind of when they are like that they are the fucking worst because yeah. they mm -hmm. almost like treat the women like you better have your emotions together and not respond to anything I'm doing because then you're not on my level. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it, Manipulation mm -hmm. like him. Yeah. And, and I sure. feel like yeah, he, he definitely gives me fake vibes and I felt like he, you know, and he like John Legend cousin or some shit like that. And so mm -hmm. I remember the last season, you know, when he was like showing us that he could sing and I was just like, sir. He couldn't sing. It just wasn't that. Mm -mm. And Nobody was, like, said he couldn't sing though. It, it no. upset me. Because when I watched the last, it, it did. Because I was sitting here like, so we all just, this this is what we're doing. So we're going to pretend <laughs> that Alex is the finest man we've ever seen, number one. For number what? two, we going to pretend like that performance was just what we was waiting the whole season for. Exactly. I felt played. Like, they played in my face. Noelle, I like her, though. I really do like yeah. her. She seems fun. Don't ever play yourself again. Don't Please do it don't. Don't, for that. don't do that. Uh, thank you, Justice, for the super chat. Finally caught alive. Love you guys. Thank you so much for the super chat. Jordan getting on my mother nerves, and I just really need to put that out there. I'm tired of her. She has what? this conversation with Summer, you know, after she kind of like did whatever she did to Summer. They went, had that sit down. What I didn't like about that was the fact that Summer brought up the fact that she just consoled Jordan. Jordan put, in my opinion, Summer in a position to make her apologize, but not once did I hear Jordan apologize for how she made Summer feel. I'm tired of Jordan. Then mm -hmm. we get to the table. Alex and over there like, oh, Jordan, you so quiet. You so quiet. She finally opens up being nonchalant, didn't want to talk about it, but wanted somebody to ask. Because I really feel like Jordan was moping around because she wanted somebody to ask her what is going on. Let's talk. So yes. then she finally opens up and then he's like, wow, I appreciate you telling me that, you know, I, I feel like this is the most I've seen of you or something. Then she turns around and snaps at the Nick. I said, oh, now she ain't necessarily lying with what she's saying, because I do feel like you ain't really give her a chance 100 um, percent last season. But then didn't Jordan give some weird vibes? It was like she didn't want the guys to look at her like a piece of meat, but at the same time, she was kind of like all up on them and doing little stuff that kind of was giving mixed signals. Mm -hmm. So, Jordan, baby, you are weird. And Shanice, whoever traumatized you, in my opinion, I don't believe it was Alex, even though he lied, talking about some. Um, I tried to look out for you or whatever it was he said he was lying. But who traumatized you was Jordan because she brought this back up. And who also traumatized you was your damn self because had you never did anything to your ex, we wouldn't know shit about it. It was going right. to way. To me, I felt like, is this confirmation that she did do, like, what? I she don't understand how she, she didn't do anything. She did say she didn't do anything? Yeah, she's still saying that he he lied and made it seem mm. like she did that. That's what she was I saying. I can see him lying about that now that we know who his brother is. Mm. Um, oh brother? wait, it was him. I thought she was. So it was the Jackson dating? brothers. That's who I thought. Is that not right? I thought she was dating Saranis. Hold up, Google. <laughs> Come on, they Google. said she was Girl, dating an insecure listen. star. Uh, hold up. Um, 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 um. No, it it wasn't him. It wasn't him because it was an extra. Was it? it was an oh, extra. It was an extra. extra. Oh God, 
got an extra. How did somebody said it? Norman Towns? Who's Norman Towns? Is that Daniel? Who's Norman Towns? Uh uh-uh. uh. I think it's somebody oh. we wouldn't recognize when we saw them. Mm-mm. Norman Towns. Ah, oh, shit. I ain't never seen this man before. I ain't never seen him either. Norman's handsome. Because he was I wouldn't extra. recognize. He was just an extra. But she ain't have to sit up there and stalk the man. So why? Are they well, well I don't. I, let me not say that because I don't know if she did for sure. But I feel like <laughs> she probably did because I feel like she one of them like thirsty, delusional women. You know, you fall. You know, you fall in love head over heels because he got good dick, and now you acting like you don't know how to act. And well, he shit, that's summer too. True. And then he low key manipulates it though. You know what I'm saying? He know you crazy, but he want to fuck with you because niggas like to fuck with crazy bitches and then be like, "Bitch, get away from me, you crazy." So no, this is the scene. I've never seen this young man <laughs> in my life. I do not remember. He was definitely giving extra vibes. Um, and you looking out? I'm, this. I'm, yeah. No, I've never seen. Wouldn't recognize him if I seen him walking down the street. At all, like what the hell? Definitely giving extra vibe. He was only there for a split second, huh? Um, Jordan, I wanted to say something about Jordan. Mm-hmm. I can't stand her. Um, I was, I came to that conclusion last season, but I wasn't quite sure yet. Something mm-hmm. about Jordan is giving. She's a she's she's a pygmy. In, in a like um, inside out type way. <laughs> it's weird for me to describe it like that. Inside out. Because she wants to be desired. And I feel like every, all these outbursts have to be with that. And I feel like she's acting up because she's losing her hair. So mm-hmm. now that she's losing her hair, it's also like, let me also be center of attention by you know, having these fits, let me be rude. Let me turn into the victim, even though I just showed my ass yelling at Summer because my hair is fine. It it was, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm not really feeling Jordan very much, especially one of the things I didn't like, and I think was the last episode, was when Nick had to come up to them and say, do y'all think I'm weird? That bothered me. Mm -hmm. Um, For they are, it seems like they're okay with Nick being very touchy. He is touchy in a way that could make some people uncomfortable. But as outspoken as Jordan is, why wouldn't she say that to him instead of making him come off as like some sort of creep? Uh, she she plays this game. I mm-hmm. I don't I don't get with it at all. It, there's a game that's being played. Is what I feel like. I want to be chased. I can see that. I don't like her, and I don't care. <laughs> But she doesn't have any hair. Doesn't mean you can act like a complete and total fucking asshole to everybody all the time. And she's an asshole. The way she treated Summer on this last episode, that that conversation they had where Summer is like basically apologizing to her and she's just like stone face sitting there. I'm just like, you are such a bitch because it's not like you haven't been rude super annoying and shit to people and summer was just making a point don't act like i'm not trying to be there for you bitch like oh my god i i don't like her mm-hmm. and i feel like it goes back not just her being a pick me but her being the i'm supposed to be the prettiest woman in the room mm-hmm. thing and mm. i think that's another thing for her like it, she wants everybody to be all over her and i don't like the way she did that shit with nick because i'm like girl every time y'all are together y'all are getting fucked up like mm-hmm. when people get drunk sometimes they can't really gauge how close they are to you they're fucking drunk and if you don't like to hang out with drunk niggas stop hanging out with drunk niggas because you always going out with drunk with, with men and getting drunk and then acting mm-hmm. like you're so surprised when they act drunk so I feel like she low key is like, I want to be a victim. I want to be the star of the show. And that's mm-hmm. another thing. That's the reason I really think that she was mad at Jasmine. Fuck all of that Silas shit and her becoming a stepper wife. You're mad because you weren't the star of the show last season. And you were supposed mm-hmm. to be that. So, yeah, I, I'm, and, I, and I understand why she would feel like that. Because Jordan does have that face. You know what I'm saying? She has a beautiful yeah. She's a beautiful face. She is beautiful. You know, but let me see you from the inside out. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and for me, I get irked when I see somebody with 
buck teeth and I can see their tongue. Um, I can see, <laughs> I don't know. It's just me. Her teeth are buck. Okay. Pretty girl. Really? Very pretty girl. But it's not giving what she thinks is supposed to give. I think she thinks that she's better than everybody else there. But I think all the girls at the house are beautiful and all the girls have the ability to be that girl. So for her to think that she is, you know, even being treated like a piece of meat or all the men want her, that is insane to me because all the girls to me are just as beautiful, if not more than she is. Um, And when it comes to the Nick thing, this is what upset me, the ma manipulation. She talked to, um, what's the guy's name with the P? Phil? Is it no. Phil? No, the gay one. What's his name? Preston? Preston. Thank you. She talked to Preston. And when they talked to Preston, they made it seem like the issue was that they were just uncomfortable. But when she talked in her confessional and when her and Summer talked in private, it was always about, oh, well, you have a girlfriend. You shouldn't be behaving this way. So is it that y'all are just trying to start some shit or is it that you truly feel uncomfortable? And to me, it feels like y'all just trying to start some shit of, I know your girlfriend will be upset, not necessarily you're a creep. So that was um, manip manipulative as fuck. I didn't like it. Because we didn't see him really do anything. It was like, girl, him touching your shoulder. Like <laughs> they, they literally show a clip of him touching her shoulder. I'm like, girl, if affection is a problem for you, Tell people that, but don't make them out to seem creepy because you're not okay with like simple right. gestures of, of touching. Cause it wasn't like he touched your titty, he touched your shoulder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. She weird. Very. What y'all thought about Bria sitting up there trying to go off about damn Mariah. I Bria and that goddamn dog get on my nerves, bro. They get on my... I did understand a little bit of her point, though. Because it's like, y'all won't let me bring my homeboy, but you already booking trips and stuff for this other person. Like, yeah, that's not cool. I get it. But she acts like she really was about to die last season. Like, it's not... I, it's To me, it's not that deep, you know. I don't even see her point with that shit because I feel like Phil was so fucking annoying and obnoxious when he was there. Taking mm -hmm. a shit in that man's toilet and not flushing the toilet because Bria did not save your room for you when you showed up late. Like, that shit was ridiculous to me. I, I didn't like none of his energy. And I feel like if he had stayed in the house longer, it would have gotten worse as he was there. So her defend, oh, oh, Phil, girl, Phil and Mariah are not the same. I feel like mm -hmm. you ran up on Mariah because as mm -hmm. a short bitch, you want to prove that you not to, you, you, you know, you not to be fucked with. Mm -hmm. And that girl was like, get the fuck, you know, pushed you and the clothes out of her face. It wasn't that serious. They kick her off the show. You come back this season still crying about it. And I honestly feel like she should have fucked you up for all she of the crime. Have. Like she should have actually punched you in your fucking face. For all of which she has to go through behind taking clothes and pushing them into your hands. Like, girl. And she just did all that because Mariah was so much bigger than her. It was easier for her to play victim. I saw Bria do an interview with another girl on TikTok. And they talked mm -hmm. about how they went to school in very, like, white areas. And I think that's where Bria gets that shit from. Black women like that make me uncomfortable because mm -hmm. the way that Bria moves is every bit of a way that I've seen white women move uh, when it comes to not all white women, of course. But, you know, when it comes to like the Karen shit, the victim mentality, the um, let me cry, but I'm not really sad. Let me use my let me weaponize my tears. That's what Bria does. And it makes me uncomfortable because I know black women in general are not really wired like that. I can't trust her as far as I could throw her. I, I don't fool with her. Why that made me hmm. think about Candace? <laughs> <laughs> it is, it, it, I don't feel like that's all. Because y'all know I'm so on Candace's side. But like when I really think about her personality mm -hmm. and that, that same, it seems like I grew up around mostly white girls thing. Mm -hmm. Well, you could just say any old thing because you can trust that the white girls aren't going to actually fight you. That's really I wonder. I wonder. I, I wonder that if she grew up around a bunch of white folks. I know she's from I Atlanta. Think, I think, I think she's from a school, though. Like, you know, a school where it's probably mostly like white chicks. At least like that's private, the, private that's school kinda, type. Yeah, that's what kind of came off to me with Candace. 
I think the situation with Candace is more closely wired to like every time we see Candace act out to me, it reminds me of like a kid throwing a fit. And I think that has to do with the manipulation from her mom. And I mm-hmm. think that has to do with the relationship she has with women. Bria, mm-hmm. on the other hand, I, I can't even explain that. I think it has every bit to do with who she hung around with. She picked up on what they did. Mm. But if you look at it though, they do have similar like lives essentially. Bria does seem like she comes from money versus the other girls. Bria um, didn't come from money. She yeah. didn't, she didn't no, seem she, like that at all to me. That's why she's using that white man. No, she didn't come from money at all, which is why she's giving she, Ashley Darby. That's even Ooh. why I don't trust her more. Okay, no, all right, that makes sense. She then. said they lived in a super low income area, like her mama had drove a beat up old, old Something Lexus. Like that? <laughs> yeah, she her mom I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, exactly. That's why I'm saying she can't be trusted. That she yeah, can't be trusted. No. She used Ask to have her daughter, mama park right. around the corner from the school. <laughs> and her mama had her going to school in a nicer area. So she she assimilated and put on what she seen them people doing, but that's not I don't think I've yet. ever seen a poor girl act like that before. Ashley Darby. But, she, but she's white. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Ashley's part white. <laughs> this is different. <laughs> Who and, and, and we're not going to tell her that she ain't 100% white. Go ahead. Listen, oh. whatever she is, it ain't what the fuck Bria is. So that's crazy that you would, that you would act like that. Yeah, I, yeah, damn. Can't trust it. She's putting on. You yeah, I think she morphed more. as she got into other circles. She morphed into what those yes. people are around her to fit in to feel like she's up there with them, and became Sadidi and you know got her. And I think she thinks having that white guy validates that as well. Yes. Whatever she's trying to give off, eh, Bria. Somebody asked the question. Um, I'm gonna get to it. Do we have anything else on Summer House? Okay. Um, thank you for the super chat. Naturally, Sadie. Uh, Sh- is it Shade or Shade? Sadie is Sadie. Sadie. Alex have wholesome hold off top. I agree with the Nisi, and he couldn't see. <laughs> he let that let him use you go to his head. Thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, built by creative says Dennis in the studio dropping some beats and barry sing um thank you for the super chat katie s c m um noel brings some flavor to the show too many kardashian like black girls on the show oh interesting thank you for the super chat i think she definitely brings personality for sure Mm -hmm. um keisha thank you for the super chat who is more unlikable jordan or brady bria this was the question bria bria no question know how to just go sit in the corner sometimes yeah, mm. for sure. And then I feel like with Jordan, it kind of slows up. Her her stuff eases up on you. Bria's BS hits you in the face like right out the gate. Um, Thank you, Princess, for the super chat. Jordan is the not like other girls type extra. Yes. Yes, that's the, the perfect way to chat. explain it. Thank you, Cassandra, for the uh, super sticker. Uh, Brianna says Jordan is acting out because her hair is falling out and because Jasmine got married before her. I didn't consider that one, that Jasmine got married before her. Before her, She did allude to being the only one have her life to have her life together. Thank you for the super chat. Well, clearly. And if she can I don't know if it's because girl, Jasmine got married should... before her. But yeah. I could see that. If she thinks she that girl. I could see yeah. her thinking she would have. I mean, Jasmine was living out of a car at one point. When she, you, she really shouldn't feel bad about that because Jasmine just married the first man that was going to take care of her. Mm-hmm. Get her out of her car. So, whole thing. Yeah. Uh, Ashley, thank you for the super chat. Jordan was the complete opposite on Winter House. On Winter House, she, what? But she let one of the girls punk her behind some white pin. Like, girl, bye. Thank I you for the super that. chat. Really? So Jordan was on Winter House first? No, in between. Mm-hmm. She just got off Winter House and before the next season of this show. And I was hearing that she basically let this white girl play her for a fool and she didn't say nothing. Oh, so wow. So basically, you're going you to act pussy on a white show and then come to the black show with all this aggression and shit. Girl, fuck you. But you know her favorite thing to Hard say is, that. as a black woman, as a black woman, 
So as a black woman, she probably was scared to say something to that white lady over there. Oh, I mean, possibly I she see was that on her. their show. Maybe she wasn't as sure, comfortable that in that space. Right. Very, feeling very token. Feeling not wanting to fuck up your opportunity. I could see her her doing that. Mm, good point. Anything else? I'm just trying to understand where these poor people got all this elitism from. It's just, I mean, mm. I think it's what uh, Toya explained at the Married to Medicine reunion. Remember, Andy was like, were you always this bougie? Being made fun of for being poor. When you get older, you become an asshole about the little bitch you got. But they were yeah. like, I remember now. Mm -hmm. the, they remind me of the, um, like, they actually made it to have money. But the other category of regular money ass or poor people as you know they get on my nerves like that are the girls who are the steve madden girls and i mean the girls who think that steve madden is top tier designer the girls who have to act like they shit don't stink you you all into a designer label it's all about trying to prove that you high class and you know actual money ain't loud so mm, i can't trust mm -mm. people like that i really can't yeah. That's why I've been needing so many NIGGAs on social media to hear that actual money is not, it's loud. not loud. It's not. it's not loud. And it doesn't need to wear designer to show it It has money. Like real rich people wear like $1,000 t-shirts and you'll never fucking know because nobody's name is on it. <laughs> they just enjoy the luxury for themselves and not others. Uh -uh. Mm. Get into uh -uh. it. But you know, yeah. we give love to the nouveau riche. Okay. We all right, y'all. What monogram all over everything? We are about to get into y'all favorite show that y'all probably gonna be watching next season. Y'all need to get on one accord and figure it out. Okay, <laughs> Real Housewives of Potomac. <laughs> Make sure that while you guys are trying to get on one accord. You know, Can we can we block here. this on? Can we block oh, this on in the comments? Oh. oh, which one? Uh, Lodo Kiba, please block that person. Oh right, my my hair stay done. Fuck, curse Lodo. that. Lodo, curse that. Whole Is that who was coming for you earlier? No, no, I don't even know who was coming for me earlier. I don't care, but I ain't like that comment. Ooh. Get the fuck off of here. I didn't care because my hair always done. That's a lie. So exactly. <laughs> okay. When is it not? But I just can't stand people that just like won't be coming on here just saying any old thing. You don't need to be in the comments now. Oh my. Well, they're gone. Bye. Mm. All right, y'all. Thanks for pointing that out. So we got them up out of chill. Pity it. All right, y'all. Let's get into this uh Real Housewives of Potomac final reunion. Gordon decides he's gonna open up and let us know that he has been bipolar. Mia decides to cry, making things about her. Um, Candace and Wendy give a subtle um uh what comfort to Mia. Um, I for one do not care anything about his uh situation. Thank you for sharing, but no one cares. At least I do not. It's so harsh. I don't know if he was saying the things saying that he had it to um be, I guess, to have whatever he's done to Mia. I don't know if he was admitting to his mental health to get sympathy from us, as you know, Mia tells us, Oh, he's been taking me, locking me out of my account, whatever, locking me in a room, all of this other stuff. Or if he just saying this for a storyline and then he over there talking about some, I, I locked the room. I, I knew I took the phone, but locked the room. And because Mia lies so much, I'm like, Gordon, baby, it's because it never happened. That's why That's you what I was remember. thinking. It's because it's <laughs> never, it never can happen, Gordon. So I'm just over the, the Thorntons. And I thought that the show was, I thought they would be enough to tune in next season. I don't even know if they enough for me. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'll I'll revisit when the time comes, but I'm just like, mm -mm. Because Gordon I can't. can't even remember his script. He can't remember <laughs> his script. It, whenever he said the close locked the clock in the door, he was like, well, when the fuck did we discuss that? <laughs> like, hold on, when did we say we was gonna say that? That's a little bit too far. 
Um, I think Gordon might not be lying about his mental illness, but I feel like he is, um, his dignity is completely gone behind Mia. And I think he's trying mm -hmm. to rationalize, like, why is she leaving me? But how can I still have a piece of her? And I think that this ties it in a pretty bow for him by saying that you have mental illness. You still have access to Mia in some way. You think she might come back around. I, I feel like he thinks she's going to come back around. Um, but yeah, I think he's just trying to rationalize everything. I, I think it was convenient for him to bring that up. I don't I think he's trying to make sure he get his allowance. That's what I was thinking as well. Like y'all lie and do a united front so everybody can make sure they get some money. Y'all are smarter than Robin and Juan. Um, mm -hmm. I don't care about Mia and Gordon, to be honest. And I don't care because they lie so much that I'm I'm no longer interested. Also, Mia is not genuine. Mia flip-flops all over the place depending on how she feels in the moment what's advantageous to her. So because of that, I don't mm -hmm. really care. Like I don't I don't respond to people who aren't genuine so loudly on reality shows. Like I, when you're mad, when you feel a way, I need to believe that that's how you feel. And when I tell you I don't ever believe any emotion that Mia projects on this show, I don't ever believe it. So I just don't care. Hmm. Well, there's that. Uh, Ashley, not understanding what Osu was, don't know how to, don't know how to explain it or do anything about it, but felt the need to be the uh, producer's pet and bring it to the front. Let me tell y'all, if Wendy did not clock in at any moment, <clears throat> she clocked in at the best time because so many times do we watch these reunion shows and when it's time for a person to answer a question and be held accountable, somebody always chimes in. And I loved how when Aneka tried to save Ashley, no, 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 mm -hmm. Ashley, you brought it to the forefront. You explain it. You do it. I absolutely love that. And, and, and the gag that a lot of people didn't catch was the fact that Aneka shut the hell up. It wasn't yes. even so much as just Ashley having to, you know, get her tongue from being tied. It was Aneka having to shake the hell up and actually respecting what Wendy said. Like, baby, that was and interesting. Ashley didn't even jump in. Mm. And but why when Ashley said she had a horrible reunion, did we not see it? Because I didn't really see that. That is true. Mm -hmm. I feel like they probably cut some shit out. But I'm going to tell you this. I think that Ashley plotted this season. And uh, Giselle and Robin were just the helpmates, right? Hmm. I think mm -hmm. the whole season they meet up beforehand to decide uh -huh. who they're going to go after in order to keep the shit off of them, basically. Mm -hmm. And I think that Ashley was pissed off with Candace for the way she talked about Michael. So I think she set out to put Candace in the same situation so that Candace would see how it felt. Remember when she said that shit to her last season mm -hmm. about Chris? But it was all lies. Then Mia jumped in on the bandwagon. He was looking at me. It all seems like something everybody knew was going on and was deciding to jump on the bandwagon. Fast forward to this season, I think she set up the fight with Deborah. I think she told Deborah to show up. I think that she knew it was going to happen. I think Giselle wow, knew. Wow, you think she did that? Yep. I think Giselle knew that the fight was going to happen. That's why she left early. But oh, to can, this, somebody said to victimize, uh, villainize Candace. Yes. 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 So put, and it was a perfect case. excuse for Giselle to leave because her dad was in the hospital. And for Ashley to then turn mm -hmm. around and say, see, it, it, if it happens again, it, it can't it can't not be you, babe. You're the common denominator. Mm -hmm. Like she already had rehearsed what she wanted to say in order to malign Candace. The only wow. problem she did not think about was Kiana getting it involved. Jumping. Yes. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. I, she, you know right. what? I didn't. I never thought about that. That makes so much sense. It sure does. It absolutely does. I do not huh. trust that Ashley Darby. She always gets away. She always escapes. Um, and I'm about sick of it. And her ass too. Uh, oh. What else ended up happening? And I wanted to say, Robin, at the beginning, because I think on some level, if Robin were left to her own devices, she wouldn't be like this, right? Mm -hmm. She wouldn't do all of this extra shit to plot against people. But because she's friends with Giselle, she just goes along with the shit. She don't really fuck with Ashley like that. She just pretends to. But this is what happened. Remember when they went on that trip and mm -hmm. Robin was mad at Wendy? Candace got there late and they sat down on the sofa and talked. 
And if you like Robin was trying to get Candace to be on her side against Wendy, and Candace was like, I'm not about what to really it? do that. When was this? What, what was this that last was season? season? That was last season. That was right before she decided to bring out the, the speaker and put it on the table and mm -hmm. all of that. I recall. Oh, yes. Okay. This is when they were in Miami. Yes. When they were in Miami. And okay. Yep. I so remember I this. Think that's the moment when Robin mm -hmm. decided to flip and become a part of the we gonna take Chris down because she was mad at Candace for not taking her side against Wendy. Right. So yeah. yeah. I can see that. And I want to say this other thing about Ashley. Um when, remember that time when Wendy had approached Ashley and said something like, oh, I never want to question our friendship or whatever. Like they became friends. You really played yourself, Wendy, because she definitely got you back. Technically, Ashley was always planning on getting your ass after you checked her the very first time that very first night. And you said it's Dr. Wendy to you. It was always Ashley's plan to be on some get back in my opinion, and this was definitely it. She definitely got your ass. And as we speak on Ashley, hold on, let me get to this super chat real quick. Thank you so much, Lady Lisa, for the super chat. Wendy shut Ashley down the same way she got Robin and Giselle together when they tried to come for Eddie, period. Thank you for the super chat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the reason why Robin she got so mad at Wendy because Wendy ate her ass up, and she was mad about wine. That's another thing everybody forgetting about. If you're really playing, paying attention to the timeline of how Robin was hiding shit with wine, I believe all of the shit with wine was going on probably around that season. She uh -huh. was depressed. She didn't want to get out the bed. And uh -huh. that specific episode, she had been drinking a lot. And oh, I think yeah. that's her puss that episode. Her, remember? Because it was like her and Evelyn was patting puss. <laughs> remember she was... You know what I'm saying? Like, it was something like that when she was like drunk. Mm -hmm. like she patted her puss. I remember that. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I feel like Robin was really like projecting her shit on Wendy mad because Eddie really ain't the cheetah wine is. Yeah, she always projecting. Yeah. Um, hold on. Thank y'all for the super chat, Miss Noel. Y'all clock how Mia been uh stealing other housewives storylines and repurposing it from the dead business part of ro partner Robin to the mental he mental health and narcissistic storyline, Drew Sedora. Mm. Thank you for the super chat. Somebody getting in her ear telling her what the hell to do. She got okay. a consultant. She got a housewives consultant. Gotta be. Um, Giselle blaming everybody for the fight, but her business partner and Ashley only offering an apology to Kiana versus offering an apology to Candace when you said that your friend you never knew her to have intentions to come there on, on that level with Candace she told you she just wanted to have a conversation with her um real smooth whatever so based on your understanding so you say of how you thought the conversation was going to go seeing that it went left you didn't offer an apology to her was messed up and I'm glad that Kiana called Ashley out for being the uh what is it aftermath of apologies Mm -hmm. because she is because you Cause waited not. how many months you waited all the way to the reunion to reach out to that girl since the fight happened we had that footage what back in september it's been months and you ain't reach out apologize do nothing do you wait till you sit your it's on the reunion <sighs> over ashley over Giselle. that was the first time that i looked at ashley and saw nothing on her forehead at all she said <laughs> you know that <laughs> Well, I never insinuated. And, and one of the things that threw me was, did y'all notice Karen was nodding her head as Ashley was talking as though she was like, maybe it was just me, but I watched reunion twice and maybe it was editing. But when Ashley was responding to Wendy, Karen sat there and kind of nodded her head like to encourage, you know, whenever you talking and what you're saying is bullshit and people will look at you kind of like, mm -hmm, I hear you. I'm listening. Karen was trying to give her that. I hear you. I'm listening type thing. And I was like, hold on, Karen. What? Let her get eaten alive. It might have been that or Karen was trying to like look interested because she was trying not to fall asleep because <laughs> there was some moment. Was thinking where it felt like Karen would just pop up and say something just, just like, <laughs> and you know what? Yes. And, and, and I feel like that. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. I think you ladies have no issue doing that, will we? Yeah. I, I think that's definitely what the case so, was. Once the was reunion scared. was over, I was sitting there thinking, how are you doing, Auntie Karen? 
because this like she came off so chill the whole season chill the whole reunion and then boom we get this dui so i'm like what was going on how you doing auntie child um i read one of them comments how y'all critique the way somebody chew carrots y'all so weird who chewing oh, carrots me i was chewing carrots it's like you chewing real aggressive i'm like how the fuck else am i supposed to chew on carrots like bitch it ain't Chow. bread <laughs> Like, so I have some video real quick that I would like to check out. And I think we'll start with this one first. Um, I'm trying to see just to get your thoughts on whether you agree with what's being said here. So um, let's go ahead and uh, get into that. Actually, we'll do this one first. OK, good. Yes. And this is the part where I said to myself, who is the real Giselle Bryant? Will the real Giselle Bryant stand up? Because you, you, I, I, I can't for the life of me understand why you can't have a human moment and say, I wasn't there to comment, to blame Wendy. And then when they said, well, Wendy wasn't around. Well, Candace, it was like, Y'all have weaponized Candace as being a spoiled a spoil brat because she comes from money. When at the end of the day, all of you mothers on that stage are raising a Candace. All of you mothers on that stage are raising your children to grow with generational wealth. All of you women on that show are raising your children to not have to ask for a man to get a house. All of you women on that couch are raising your children to never depend on a man for money and to never depend on, on people to do things for them. <laughs> so the fact that you 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 weaponize not you tear, weaponize not tear teaching your children not to do, and and you set that girl up to feel so disregarded makes me so upset for oh. her to the point. She now has to <laughs> figure out life for herself. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Fuck all that. I had to laugh. I don't no. give a damn. Listen, it's having these facials for me trying to see through the bullshit that has me. Like, heavily be fucking for real. I know she like, wanted to laugh. I, it's giving a little bit of Phaedra when Phaedra said to uh, uh, what's that? Apollo, did I baby? It's mm. giving, did it get to you like that baby? Listen. Emma Berry Singh. I told y'all, I asked her because I was on her Patreon yesterday and I asked her, I was like, so you thought them tears was real? And she, I, you know, I, I think that, you know, Carlos has been doing this for a long time and he really cares about, I was like, oh yeah, the, the way he over there treating his own people, you think you think he care? You think he get wrapped up? <laughs> it's hard. It's so hard. She just started, you know, explaining a way about how hard it is for him as a producer and all of this shit. And I'm just kind of like, girl, I know that's your friend. It's okay. But I don't believe none of them tears. Why the... I know he be like trying to look relaxed, but I also be feeling like Carlos, why are you always low key trying to give us like sex? Your titties oh. was out at the Love and Marriage DC reunion <laughs> show. Like I was like, why are his titties out? And then he sitting here right now, this nigga in his silk pajamas, red light special vibe. I'm like, what's going on? Like, <laughs> Car Carlos, do you have dick or are we shopping for dick? Which one is it? Either way, um. I don't believe any of that shit he has going on. And I feel like it's so cap. I think he gets online and says whatever he thinks will garner the most attraction to him. Mm -hmm. um, because essentially, if you really did feel like that, why is there such a history of you mistreating the women that you produce? Um, I think my only thing is I haven't seen him going up for her any other time until, you know, the masses started. And then now I see it. Um and, I, you know, I, like you, also am concerned because sometimes the things that he says, I see them already on Twitter. So it's like, did you say this or did you already take this from what they said? Because it's literally verbatim what I've already seen. Um, but that's just me. Yeah, I do think that is, um, you know, 
whenever Carlos cries, I feel like it's usually always attached to whatever he's seen women in his life go through. Mm. So it's not like tears for the actual woman that he's talking about. He always circles it back around and talks about the women in his life. So I think he was probably triggered by that. Mm. Probably so. He was triggered by that, which is why his voice was shaking for whatever reason. Um, I agree with what he said, but just just like Jamie said, I do think it's interesting that as soon as everybody starts talking about Giselle, you want to misalign yourself um, with her. I'm going to let you play the other video. I think the time of those two videos coming out at the same time Mm -hmm. is um, interesting. Yes. Because he Um, loves all the girls, even Giselle. (laughs) hilarious let's get into Giselle just a little bit because Monique did have a sit down with someone and she kind of um talked about a little bit of her time on Potomac and for everybody including myself and listen I was ready to unleash and unload and they didn't show half of what was done (laughs) to this day I still recall certain things that were that happened that weren't shown like there was this one point where after the binder the the biggest memory that i have and the thing that i hate that they didn't show um with giselle she was so upset and she was so quiet after lunch like had nothing to say when chris came out and pretty much read her um she lost it and she just blurted out f you she like lost it and they never showed it but she lost it and i was like that pretty much summed up you know why I left because they were constantly protecting the people who should have been exposed and show who they really are on and off camera. And they kept these protections for people to the extent of not even protecting, you know, my innocent children and, and those whole narratives that they were trying to point out. And, and it just got me to a point where I was just like, you know what, I don't have to deal with this. This is too much. And I decided to walk away. Why do you think yeah. that pick and choose protection, if that's what it was, was there in the first place? Well, if you're a puppet master, you're going to keep your puppets. Mm-hmm. So the ones that you can control, the ones that you can get to do what you want them to do, you're going to keep those people. But the ones who speak up like me and say, no, that's not me. I'm not doing that. I'm not saying that. We're the ones that get the hardest time because we're not doing what they want us to do. We're not creating the show that they want. We're still trying to maintain a sense of who we are. Mm. In there for everybody, including myself. And- All right. So y'all just heard what Miss Monique said. And it turned out to be very much so true. They definitely be over there doing a bit of protecting. And you can kind of hear it from this previous reunion, the way they were chopping things up. People would be talking in a normal voice. And then next thing you know, Giselle voice to be raised a little bit. And I'm like, okay, so what is she really talking about? I'm done with it. I'm done. I'm like, that's not even a tone of what was happening. Same thing with, with Candace. So they definitely was chopping up a lot of SHI and they were protecting their people. Just like I feel like Ashley is the producer's pet and we didn't even see her have a terrible reunion as well. So it seemed like they, it ain't just, uh, it seemed, well, it's given that they really protecting Ashley and Giselle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And not just G- Giselle alone. And they were protecting Robin up until Robin played in their face and gave them her ass yeah. repeatedly. Like I said, repeatedly. she was on a pit. She was on a performance improvement plan because they let her know she was going to be gone for a season. She had the longest, like, even though I um, big up Robin for getting her businesses together, she only got them together because she knew her time was coming. They gave her the type of notice that they would never give a Candace or a Wendy. Candace and Wendy would be gone the season they didn't give. Robin had elongated, hey, get your stuff together. We're going to we're gonna allow you to, to stay here storyline free for a season or two, or three, or four, and then after that, you have to go. Um, mm-hmm. One of the things I wanted to call out was they they never showed, I don't know if they showed it on the Peacock, an extended version, but they never showed whenever Wendy has spoken to NECA in their language. You remember they showed that? Yes. The they showed it in the previews, but they didn't show it at the actual reunion. I'm so tired of them doing I'm that shit. I'm glad you brought that up. Yep. Let me tell you Thank something. You. Bravo. I know somebody going to watch us and listen and then act like they didn't. So take this advice. Put a mosh posh together of all of this shit that y'all kept out and put it on Peacock as an extra episode. Y'all will make the money and we will fucking watch it and review it. (laughs) <laughs> like but y'all need to y'all need to rectify the situation and i feel like the best way to rectify the situation is to put out a uh what you missed or what we cut out editing room floor footage from this reunion show or that reunion you know what i'm saying because i just feel like they do so- a 
uh extended cut, but they still don't show everything on yeah. Peacock. And I based it. on the comments, I didn't that. you watched the extended cut. Yeah, because oh, well, yeah. I watched it on it because I like to hear people curse. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I watched the extended one on Peacock so I can hear people curse because I want to hear how mm-hmm. you curse. Like right. and hearing them say fucking stuff be hilarious to me when they always like bleep it out. So like hearing Giselle actually cuss was hilarious to me. But I feel like Giselle was very much pissed off this reunion show. I don't know if anybody noticed it, but she did a lot of what Nene would do when she didn't want to be held accountable, yelling and mm-hmm. talking over people so that they can't yep. be heard. Yeah. Yeah. That I was think she also just energy. didn't want to be sad. Like it was weird to me that even whenever they asked her about her daddy, she still was able to turn up on um, um Candace. Oh, Candace, yeah, talking about mm-hmm. even when it's not about her, it was like, and that would have me being like, "Girl, you fuck you and your daddy. How about that?" Yeah, <laughs> Bondi Blue said that's it. the energy. Jamie did not say it. They didn't say it. <laughs> I said it. No, I shrugged because if that's how somebody would feel, it's like, I mean, I would, I My wouldn't key. say it, but I understand. I, I absolutely understand. I understand. Yeah, for sure. I absolutely. I, I have a dead daddy. So miss me with the bullshit. <laughs> miss me with the bullshit. I buried my pa at 19. So and, and it had to go in and take finals the next fucking day. So I, I don't even, I don't want to hear nothing about none of that. At the end of the day, I think she used her dad repeatedly in a reunion show. And I don't like that shit. It's the same thing as Karen using her parents for that damn DUI she got. I feel like she tried not. Giselle didn't give us anything with her dad, in my opinion. No, Nothing. But she used him as an excuse for why, why you didn't call old oh girl. Oh, because of what was going on with my dad. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think she uh. still was like using him in some way in order to like escape accountability because, oh, I was going through this with my dad. Girl, mm-hmm. girl. And then another thing, why did she get to stay on the show and never show us any of this shit? We had to hear about it from Robin in a confessional because she didn't want to talk about it. Why yeah. is she on a reality show? I don't get it. Do something else. We don't get into the last <laughs> season that you going through something traumatic in your life. All we get is my daughter's going to college. And we don't even care about that. That's and all, honestly, she makes me dislike her daughter. I hate and I'm that. dating somebody that could be dating my daughter. <laughs> dating or in a contractual say, agreement? But, but closer, closer in age dating. Mm. Contractual agreement is what it was given. Because now all of a sudden you don't care what he's doing. Uh-uh. She's annoying. Nothing annoying for real. sure. I, and that's the thing. Like as a single housewife, you have all of these relationships and we don't get to see any, any of it so that you can just pretend to be high and mighty. Like, what is the point of that? Like she's dating. Please know that that, that that bitch is dating because she's one of them women that only find validation in how a man sees them. So even if y'all don't see the men, oh, trust me, that coach is out there. Hmm. She kind of pretty much said I feel like it, it can't be. Or she's at least was trying to put her tea out there. She might be bitter, but I also think it's because she doesn't get far in her relationships. Mm. She gets them in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. I don't think because she doesn't want to have to actually be vulnerable and connect. She probably good with just getting a little dick and a dinner and sending them niggas on their way, which I'm not mad yeah. at, to be honest. As a woman of her age and after everything she's been through, I I don't think she should be trying to get married. I think it should be just like a fun, but I also feel like we should be able to see that if you're going to be on uh, a reality show and we would want to see it like make this interesting for us mm-hmm. all right is that enough on the reunion oh wait wait, wait 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 let me think before we go we said ashley and her oh ashley and michael girl you meant you were still rubbing those feet <laughs> I was thinking that I too. agree. She definitely is. is. And I don't believe she dated <laughs> no damn body. I think them was all lies, Cap. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I think she's still rubbing Michael's feet and holding cum in her mouth so that she mm-hmm. can secure her bag because she feels like she can't do it on her own. And that's so sad to me because mm-hmm. at this point, I think Ashley has solidified herself as a quintessential housewife, right? We may not always like her, but she's messy. She can spread it around. She can give Uh it to whoever needs to get it. And she's not afraid to 
not take herself so seriously. So I mm -hmm. feel like essentially if Ashley didn't have that, I need to fill my dad void with old Michael Dick. Like if she didn't have that thing going on, yeah. I think she would be a great housewife that could stay on this show until it's over. Mm -hmm. But you know. Yeah. I think she accidentally um slipped up and said she still rubbed his feet the same way she still said Deborah was her friend. Mm. Yes. Yes. A great comparison because she did. Mm -hmm. Definitely giving slip up. I mean, what's my friend? Uh, that's your friend. Somebody said like, no feet be in your mouth. Say what? A good lesson. Okay. A good lesson. Did you hear her say? He told her, don't work. Don't follow, you know, whatever aspirations you had. Because how are we going to go around the world if if you got to work? And then what ends up he, happening? She worked for him. That's what I was confused about. She said she worked for was, him. Oh, yeah. Him. She, was she his... might have been working for him just as a job and still had her aspirations to do other things. But he Possibly. came in and was like, no, don't worry about none of that. Let me just take care of you. And she Actually, just be lying, with bro. That. She do that in the first because season one she was talking about how she was eyeing the hell out of out of him. They she met. She was work, working right? for him. Yeah, she was, she was eyeing him. him and she right? was, yes, and she was determined to get with him. Now well, all of a sudden he's telling she you was to an intern somewhere. She, she was said his waitress. She was an intern after, but at the beginning she was a waitress, and then later it turned into she was an intern. And then I feel like at some point everybody was like Sheila sent her ass up there to get that man. <laughs> Period. <laughs> you know what I'm saying like go get our check. Young girl. And honestly, when you think <laughs> about it, that's probably exactly what happened because Ashley was a pageant child and she was poor. When I think about poor pageant children, a lot of times their parents are pushing them into that as a way of getting them into entertainment or getting them into something that they can make Quiet a lot of money set. at a young age. Quiet on set. Exactly. Uh, and that's how she, I mean, when you think about it, that's how she ended up meeting Candace through the the you know the um pageant circuit mm -hmm. and then having that like fake friendship slash hate thing with with uh Ashley that transitions to being on the show like when you think about it that shit is very kind of like I guess a uh, status quo so to speak like Ashley mm -hmm. fits a very um specific type of stereotype when you think about it huh interesting yeah it is interesting I guess that Bria st stereotype Yes. And it's yeah. crazy that you say that because that's exactly how that would happen. Like you would be in the vicinity of a Candace so that you could pick up on her mm -hmm. mannerisms, how she talks, how mm -hmm. she, you know, showcases herself so that you can appear to be on the same level with her. Mm -hmm. So, yep. yes. Yes. That's exactly it. Okay. Hmm. All right. Well, let's switch gears, but not too much of gear switching. Okay, cool. All right. Okay, well, my shady moment yeah. came a few weeks ago, actually, so it's a little bit late. Um, when other people decided to speak for me and spread my business for me, mm -hmm. which, you know, we're used to um, people doing stuff like that, but... For something this um, important, yeah. I think is incredibly rude. Um, so, and I wanted to speak my own business, my mm -hmm. own truth, my yeah. own life, uh, my own news. And I wanted to share it out of my own mouth um, when the time was appropriate. And I felt that the appropriate time would be um, to speak on this particular subject matter would be once... Season eight of The Real Housewives of Potomac was finished airing. Yes. Which it is now finished airing. The reunion, um, the last reunion episode just went off last night, yep. Sunday, if you're listening to this on a Monday. Um, and I wanted to respect the network and respect um, the show um, and wait until the season ended, which yeah. I think, you know, makes sense um, to share this news. But yes, I will not be returning to season nine of the real housewives oh. of Potomac. I to was... hear you say it out your mouth. Like it's like killing my heart right now. <laughs> and I, I obviously it's... I know this information, but like to hear you say it. Right. It's reality. Oh. It's, it's reality. The, the network did not invite me back. Um, I was fired for lack of better words. 
<laughs> and I will not, you know, sugarcoat the situation and say, oh, I am walking away and this is a break or anything like this. This was a network decision. Um, and, you know, and I'm okay with it because nothing lasts forever. And I, I know, you know, I had a very long run on the show. Yes. Eight seasons is a long time. Eight seasons for sure. Um, and I just, you know, I don't have anything like written to, (laughs) to read off of. So I'm just like speaking. Um, and I just really appreciate the time and the opportunity that I had on the show. Yeah. Um, and you know, I just want to say thank you to the network, Bravo, Truly Original, the production company, the executives there, the people who gave me the opportunity to be on the show, who saw something in me, um, in 2015, I think, was that when we filmed season one? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Because it premiered in 2016. Uh-huh. Um, you know, the people who saw something in me um, and thought that they, you know, wanted me to be a part of their network, their show, their platform, and to share my story and my life, um, my family, my trials and tribulations, my ups and downs, um, and, you know, the the beautiful friendships that I have on the show, Um yeah, so first of all, thank you to the network and the executives. Thank you to all of the producers, all mm-hmm. of the crew that mm-hmm. we've worked with. Um, thank you to the fans, yeah. of course, who've watched us from day one, especially our day oneers, um, who, you know, when Bravo announced the Real Housewives of Potomac was coming on and they saw, you know, this weird city, you know. <laughs> they're and like, they're, what's Potomac? Yeah, they're like, where, why do we want to watch this? Yeah. And they said, well, let's give it a chance. And they they watched it. They loved it. They grew with us. They told their friends who told their friends. Yep. And, um, you know, they they loved us, loved us or hated us, whatever it would be. But they, they watched, watched us. Yeah. Yes. But I do want to especially thank all of the fans and viewers who have – um, supported me, shown love to me, um, who have, you know, whether you directly sent me love or you prayed for me or you just have, you know, positive energy and positive thoughts around me, I appreciate you. And I and I hope that I inspired you, the viewers, the fans, to live your life, you know, authentically, yep. not feel pressure to change for anyone or for society or to impress people um and just to be yourself and um t- oh are you gonna cry oh robin you're gonna make me cry no no tears oh god okay well i'm not gonna cry tears, no no tears, tears. okay tears. go ahead no and then i just want to finish shit <laughs> You don't have to finish, Robin. I think we've heard enough at this point. Um, yeah, that was Robin pretty much letting everybody know that um, she's out of here. She's not going to sugarcoat anything. And um, she was fired. I appreciate Robin for keeping it honest and saying exactly what it was uh, for her. She's done. And, you know, it's one of them things where it's like, you want somebody fired so much. And then once they finally get it, it's like, dang, that's kind of messed up. Like, dang, I ain't expecting to really do it though. Cause you know, you've been and talking about you, it. So you was thinking that, Jamie? Just now, yes. <laughs> I, I never like, had really, that thought. She really gone. I ain't think they're really gonna let you go for real. <laughs> I only yeah. had that, I only had a thought close to that once. I thought about Candace not coming back because I always wanted Robin gone for, for at least the past couple seasons. But now that I know that Candace ain't coming back, the only reason why I'm like, damn, is because now I'm can, like, what is the landscape of the show going to be? Who y'all going to bring on? Because Candace leaving is like, in my mind, three people leaving the way that she delivers, the way that they come after her. So I don't know. It's just kind of weird. What is Potomac going to be? That's the only thing that came to mind. Three people but Robin can't be gone. Her, her husband, and her damn mama. Because they can't use her mama against her. They can't drag her. And they can't bring up what Chris do and don't got going on. You was right. Exactly. It, yeah, that's exactly what it is. Mm. Well, 
I mean, listen, I'm sorry. Y'all know how I felt about it. Like, <laughs> I was glad. I was happy. Finally, it is happening. I, I was happy about it because I'm tired. Like, I'm, I've had it up to here with Robin. Mm -hmm. And it's specifically because I don't like how Robin acts like a white teenage boy whenever people do the same thing to her that she does to everybody. I'm just asking a question. Girl, shut up. Okay? I'm tired of you. I really don't like the way she handled the wine situation. Like, girl, like if you're trying to keep your check, stop. Why are you sticking beside him so tough? Make this nigga have to pay on some level for what you've been going through with him. And you know, and that's another thing, y'all. At my core, I never liked Robin since the beginning because I didn't like the way Robin let Juan play in her face the entire time and then got mad every time somebody brought it up. Every time somebody brought it up about the mm -hmm. fact that Juan basically treated you like he didn't want you and he didn't like you, you would want to fight some fucking body so about it. Do that's how it marriage, Robin. Ashley was 100% right. Now, Ashley, you don't know anything about a happy marriage because you're over there holding cum in your mouth. I'm not going to get over that. That's that, that that's terrible. I don't even understand what's happening. It's giving indentured servitude. Um, but I also feel like now I realize that Robin because she looks white the way she does, she always feels like she needs to prove her blackness. And mm -hmm. I think her relationship with, a, with Juan is a way for her to prove her blackness. I stuck beside him. I held him down. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That type of thing. Um, and y'all know I think that Robin is one of those closeted lesbian women that will never be honest with herself about how she truly feels. So she'll stay miserable running behind some man to fit a image that she can't really feel. But, you know, good luck to her. I hope her med spa opens. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't I know if her helps no so Juan can get a job. Go ahead. That's what I was thinking too. I, I said the same thing. I hope that it But I don't want him to run it in the ground, so maybe that'll be a bad idea. Uh, -huh. uh I don't know if her relationship with Juan is so much a point to prove her bl blackness. I think that is trauma bond after trauma bond after trauma bond. Because remember, whenever we met them, her parents raised him because both his parents died. But think so about that. it. Think about it. Like she's the good girl. He is the hood kid. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yeah. like it, it still kind of goes into her wanting to fit that mold of, you know, I'm going to get with a, with a, um, you know, not a thug, but I'm sure Juan had a certain edge to him with the fact that neither one of his parents were in his life like that. Both of them died from drug uh, abuse, I believe. I think they both had AIDS or HIV and it was from drug, mm -hmm. and his drug mm -hmm. use. Which is so fucking sad. But you know that that lends to a certain type of personality on a young black boy playing basketball. You know what I'm saying? But didn't Juan find out the guy that raised him wasn't really his daddy? Yeah. Yeah, they did give that that season. They, they That was last season I think they gave. Whenever she had that medium come to them too. I think that was the same mm -hmm. season the medium came to them. I forgot about so. that. But shit, that, I mean that plot thickens even more for the, for the trauma bonding. <laughs> Yeah. Shit. Maybe that's what she meant when she said his life is so entertaining or so interesting. You should create a show around what she said, a movie. Girl, right, like we been... ain't had eight damn seasons Hello. for y'all to deliver anything. Hello. Why do we need a special? Girl, you've been paid. She is exhausting. Like, I don't know how much she thought she was supposed to get. <laughs> Girl, get her away from Larry's. Aneka is out. Candace is out. Uh, I think we'll definitely miss Aneka. I don't, I'm sorry, Candace. Sorry about that. Oh, we'll miss sorry. Candace. Girl. We will be missing Candace, but Aneka, I'm not understanding why you're doing all these interviews, but um, I will let you have it. Uh, I hate, Boy, I watched one of her me. interviews. Mm -hmm. She, somebody, they asked her, are you going to be returning? We know Candace and Robin is out, but will you be? She said, you guys have to follow me. Yeah. I have so much going on. I said, cut it Girl. out today. Cut it out today, ma'am. Um, oh, you're, you're done for I now. I have a question for y'all. What's up? Do y'all think she would have survived on Married to Medicine? No. Because she said that she almost, or she was approached for that. I don't think she would have survived because I think they would have ate her ass up like they I don't think she would have done the sweet tea and they would have ate her up like they did sweet tea because whenever a young woman comes around even mm -hmm. if she is like qualified career career wise they love to little girl women on uh -huh. Mary Medicine so I feel like they would have still tried to sun her um, and she still wouldn't have gave I think that she 
gave more than Dr. Alicia to me. That's why I'm like, well, see, we forgot all about, forgot all mm-hmm. about her. So I'm like, we could have put Aneka in her place. That's a good point. And still kept, kept T. And T would have at least had somebody around her age that she could have actually clicked with. So I think that Aneka could have potentially done a little better on Married to Medicine. And it also, she would have had a different type of angle and storyline too. So. I wonder if she would have came at them women the way she came at Wendy. I'm trying to clear it up then, bitch. What? She would have uh-huh. did that to Heavenly. <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> Eventually. And they sure. Heavenly would have ate her ass up and I don't know how she would have responded because she's I don't know. But I feel like Sweet T can go toe to toe with Heavenly. I feel yeah, like I can. feel like she can. No, Sweet T can. I don't think that uh Necker. Okay. Yeah. Cause I feel like she would have got flustered. She sounds like a Valley girl. So I feel like whatever her arguing skills are, they're not at the Miami girl level. No. Uh-uh. So I don't think she would have been able to fuck with Heavenly. And I think Heavenly would have fucked with her on purpose just to make her earn her check. All right. So. All right, y'all. So here's the last thing I want to get into um, before we get up out of here. Um, there was an interview that was done with Winter Harris of Love and Marriage DC. She did it with uh, Queen Sheba Darling here on YouTube. So shout out to her. And she kind of touches on a little bit of, I guess, like the money and things. You know, that's always been a question of like, what y'all making, what y'all making or whatever. So let's just check out these clips. What he put on it as far as money? What are we talking about? Oh. What do you mean? Was it juicy? Juicy offering? Yes. I don't know what people think we get paid. We do not get Bravo money. What I can say, because I am contractually bound not to give numbers, what I can say is that it was not over 2,500 an episode. We finna go to break, because I know you lie. <laughs> I, I know you lie. That I know for sure. Are that you- I can I can say with with full confidence without telling exactly what the numbers are. Now, was this specific to you? From what I understand and what Monique had expressed to me, she was the highest paid on our cast. And she told me that I should ask for what she was getting. Mm -hmm. So she actually volunteered what she was getting to me. So I knew what she made. And she knew for a fact that no one on our cast made higher than her. Which was... I can't remember her exact number, but it... It, it wasn't it, above that 2500 No, it wasn't above 3000 for sure. So Carlos King is... Wow. Because, you know, she told me before that when women go to Africa, they sometimes go with Quad or Yandy or... I didn't... <laughs> <laughs> oh, we want to be messy. Let's talk about how you pay them people $2,500. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we start out with that. Actually, when you first start reality TV, you start out with really nothing, right? We're not going to get into that because I. Okay. I so, so we're we're good. They were good. Hmm. She said we're good there. So I do think that's messed up when you like, okay, let me go back. Let me say this. Well, number one, yes, I think that's messed up as far as the amount when people are putting so much of their life on the line. I understand that you're getting something in exchange, which is like, um, being put out there to the public to advance your businesses or your profile or whatever. But uh, I do think that's a really low ball number. Uh, when it comes to Monique, I'm like, Monique, you was going to get them all this stuff about your, your marriage and stuff for $3,000. <laughs> was the most they would have paid? Five cap. So you really lowered when you left Real Housewives of Potomac to go over to love and marriage dc like that is just crazy I but i do i i will say this is it the fault of carlos or is it the fault of own because they give him the budget is what i would believe and then he has to disperse it do they not give enough or is hoarding going on i don't question. know which one it is i low-key feel like they're not giving enough um, because I feel like across the board, all the reality shows start out at 2500 or less, probably between fifteen and 2500 per episode. So I think that's what they all kind of start out at. But I guess if you're a no up, name. Yeah, if you're if you're someone that people don't know. But I feel like he probably convinced her that the first season 
they needed to take the pay cut because it's on own. It's not Bravo. Mm -hmm. The first season is like this, but the second season will probably be able to really get money. And then what do you do? You prolong the first season so that nobody can negotiate, renegotiate their contracts. And then when the time time comes to renegotiate the contract, you're not answering text messages. So I think Monique lied about her salary to winter. You think so? Yeah, I do. Um, mm. Just Ooh. because it was something in this interview where they talked about Monique told her it was a good opportunity for her to come on the show. She said that that was her friend. And then they mentioned like the bait and switch. Like once she got on the show, Monique paid her dust. I, I don't, I don't think Monique really told her. I don't think Monique was getting paid a ton, but I don't think the number that she gave winter was equal. Why would they ever pay winter the same number that they paid Monique? So I don't even know why she would ask for what Monique had. I think she lied. No, I don't think that uh, they, she didn't say they paid them the same amount, but she, no, but she told her to ask for what she made. Yes, but they still didn't pay her that. Um, I don't even think the number she gave her to ask for probably. Yeah, that's what Nisi's saying. Made. Like, even if it is yeah, 3000 like think... instead of 2500 For Monique, yeah. Yeah. I mean, possibly. Shit. The I show mean, was being built around her. It had to I be think, more than 3000 I would hope so. And honestly, I feel like it, she probably lied to Winter because... Like, I know that I'm really the pool and I know I need these people to be on the show and I need the show to be successful. So I think she took it on her back. Like, I need to get these people in. And so let me tell them exactly. I'm not making as much because that's all they're willing to pay them. And I need them to come on to the show. Yeah. But I also feel like, you know, technically, if we're being real, we all know that everybody starts off around twenty five hundred dollars an episode. We've been hearing that since loving hip hop days. So I don't know what... Mm -hmm everybody expects but a first season that's like heavenly said that's like usually how much they get paid on a first season yeah so, i guess she wasn't really tripping off that but more so hoping to be able to elevate at some point yeah. and especially with winter feeling that she was painted to be a certain person that she wasn't she was trying to get more what was also interesting in that interview was the fact that she said when Monique's situation started to change with her marriage mm -hmm. she um reached out to see if she can get you know renegotiate the contract or whatever and she was pretty much left on red yeah and I was like oh damn not not the person that y'all building a show around and you pulling her and her people in and then you just leave the lady on red like that like that's kind of I wonder if she was on nice. red because they were unsure of if they would even get another season. It mm, could have been that. And in combination with maybe the number was just insane. But I, I don't know. Something weird was going on. Because I didn't think they was going to get another season. Mm. Oh, interesting. Well, anything else, ladies? No. No, I'm good. I think that's it. All right. Well, we thank you guys so much for being here tonight with us. Make sure that you guys are supporting the video, liking up the video, definitely following us on social media at Jamie, that's me, at Bondi Blue, at Nisi Dixon. You can find Bondi on Twitter at Blue Rose Bondi. Did I say that right? Yes, ma'am. All right. Make sure you guys follow us, support us on all social media platforms. We thank you guys so much for being here and we will catch y'all in the next one. Bye-bye.